What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of I'll Call You Right Back podcast with me, your host. My name is Chad Medved. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the show. Uh, This is my podcast. Uh, I talk to interesting people about what they do and how they got to that point in life. It's my elevator pitch. Um, First thing is first, um, you know, call everyone, tell everyone you know, tell your grandmother that uh, Turner Dairy Farms released the Chocolate Marshmallow Limited Edition flavored milk. Uh, That is tied for my favorite out of all their limited edition flavored milks. My first was the birthday cake, surprisingly, but in a close, close second, the chocolate marshmallow milk. And uh, that is out right now on the shelves. Uh, Steel City and Turner's also did a collaboration that is available at steelcitybrand.com. And uh, I'm not sure how long that's going to be available or how much they have of those pieces, but I know that they're going quick because I see all the reposts of the stories on Turner's uh, Instagram. Uh, Follow them at Turner's PGH to keep up with all the interesting things that they got coming up. Uh, I think I just saw that they're releasing strawberry lemonade. They're releasing the paper half gallons of tea again, like limited edition cartons. Absolutely insane. They're killing the game. And uh, I'm proud to, you know, say I'm affiliated with them guys. You know, those are good people. 90 years in a dairy in in the dairy industry through the ups and the downs. Let's go. You can't help but to root for them people. Uh, But yeah, run over to your local bodega and grab yourself a uh, nice pint of that chocolate marshmallow. Um, We are also... We are also uh, keeping uh, keeping you updated on the dogs uh, training. We just I literally just got done doing a Zoom training session. Uh, Zoom did not work because why would it ever work? But uh, you know we just did our own. We followed along with the guide, and you know the dog. You know I'm, I'm I have faith that the dog is you know, getting on the right path. You know what I mean? She's still getting out of pocket sometimes. Antoinette actually bit her the other day. Uh, you know, it's an old wives tale that, uh, uh, if a dog is getting mouthy with you, you know, give it a little bite on the scruff. Hey, you know what it is? Like I ain't putting dogs in chokers or nothing like that. Uh, but I, I gave a dog a bite on the scruff. Antoinette did it. And, uh, you know, you know, I'm not, I'm not taking a bite out of the damn dog, but I'm giving a little bit showing her. I got some teeth and, uh, I don't know. Antoinette had said it might have worked, but that's uh, that's the update of the dog. You know, it's just fresh on my mind. You know, that's why I had to touch on it. We literally just got done doing a training session, did some hot yoga. You know, I feel like I was uh, I feel like I got demons exercise out of my body. Uh, get on that hot yoga if you haven't. But the reason that everyone is here this week, you know, I have a, I have a couple a couple of special guests this week. I sit down with neighbor Nick and skater Rob of the Anybody Can Do This Show. Um, the Anybody Can Do This Show. I was trying to think how I was going to explain this to everyone. So. These guys hit me up, asked me to come on their podcast. I didn't really know who they were at first. And uh, I was like, oh, I got to listen to an episode to kind of get a feel of what what these guys were doing. I had no idea what I was getting into. And I'm telling you that from the beginning... I was just, I was hooked on it. You know, they're hilarious. You know, Skater Rob, Neighbor Nick are a perfect dynamic duo of just, you know, chaos and profound wisdom. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I love that. You know, that's what I love about comedy podcasts. I like to laugh and I like to hear some shit that you're like, damn, like that's, that's some shit, you know, like they're, they're spitting game. And you know what I, you know what I mean? Like that's, I love that, uh, that blend of everything. Um, but, uh, anybody can do this show. Uh, you know, I got to go over to skater Rob's place and, uh, sit down and record with these guys. And like, I just had a blast. Like I, 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 my initiation to them was listening to an episode of an older lady who is a fan from Erie who became a fan like, and, kept in touch with these guys through their weekly surveys that they put out after each episode. Uh, yeah, that you can go and participate in surveys after each episode each week and uh, kind of interact with these guys. And this lady, Steel Gray, is from Erie. She came down to do a fucking interview with uh, Neighbor Nick and Skater Rob just about life. And I was like, this is everything I want in a podcast. Like, it was fun. It was light. It was like, you know, it was 
filled with fucking gems, you know, like they're talking all kinds of good shit. So I immediately, you know, I immediately just dove through their back catalog and started listening to these episodes. And they have an episode about striking distance versus sudden death. And, uh, you know, they bring on their friends to do, you know, to like weigh in on topics. And it's just like everything I want in a podcast. And I, I, I swear to God, whenever I say it, it's like, it's my favorite that I've heard in the city. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And mine's like, you know, we're different, you know, we do different things and they, uh, they drop their episodes every Thursday. They have a, they have a brand new season. Season four is dropping today. So if you're listening to this, listen to the episode, get a, get, get a feel for these guys and then hop on over and grab the, anybody can do this show season four premiere. So, uh, without further ado, episode 162 of I'll call you right back podcast with skater Rob and and neighbor Nick of the Anybody Can Do This Show. Trust you know what I mean? For one beer, she don't even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even nervous, so like, we're all good. Skater Rob dropping jewels already. Not even Just, nervous. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, are you going by Skater Rob on this? Rob Star? Bobo, Bobby Scoots, what are you going at? Why don't you just not worry about it? <laughs> <laughs> no. How about you just not worry about it? This is a, oh, dude. Love this book right here. I didn't read it yet. I, I just got I haven't it in. either, but I'm just, I mean, Action Bronson is a life, is a life model of mine. Yeah. So. It's like, especially now he's, uh, I mean, I, I don't know, dude, I have the most struggle with like discipline as far as like, you know, eating and like just wanting to work out. But it's like, once I get into it, it's like, I, I, I'm, I'm zero to a hundred. Like I'm, I can't just be half in half out. Okay. So what's, what's stopping you? What's stopping you from being all in? I mean, just like excuses, like a million of them. Yeah, You're yeah, like, yeah, I call yeah, it as yeah, it is. Yeah. It's right, like, yeah. I could wake up, up early. Up and best, oh, dude, I come up with good ones all the time, dude. Self-awareness. Yeah, like this morning I had to, uh, like this morning I uh, had to go into work a little bit late. So I had like a little bit of extra time and I woke up. And I was like, don't be a piece of shit. Go down in the garage and just like, you know, start lifting a little bit. It's like, don't, you don't even need to do a lot. Just get in the garage. And then I was like, nah. And then I got in the shower and then in the shower, I was just like, don't be a fucking piece of shit. Got out of the shower, went down and lifted, then came back. Let's and go. Gone. Okay. Yeah, all you right, know what I mean? all right. Dude, that's, I you feel like the fact that you like did that, that now that I'm you're, trying. you're guaranteed to work out tomorrow then and then it's over. Two oh, days yeah. in a row exactly. and it's over. Like, exactly. That's right. what I told my wife. You I was got like, out of the shower and went downstairs after already saying, fuck it, I'm out. Dude, you're, you're in. So I'm you in. do one more tomorrow. And, and then I'll be good. Get, dude, you get three to five in this week. I will be golden. Golden for sure. Okay. I love it. Big changes are afoot. Big changes are afoot. <laughs> watch out for strawberry cuz yeah. so like what's it, what's your goal is to like uh, i just want to not be a piece like, of shit anymore. Yeah. you know what but i mean is that that's i mean again it's hard to call you a piece of shit with all the shit you got going on i would say more so you you want to get in shape yeah like, yeah i just yeah. want to be healthy you know yeah. what i mean right. like okay. I'm, I, like you know i turned 30 and uh i don't know I, i'm more aware of mortality you know what i mean i'm just yeah, like for sure People were fucking dying all the time. And you I'm were just talking like, about that with us. God yeah. damn. Dude, that's, that's, that's crazy you were talking about that, dude, because I was, I've was i thought about a lot of that type of shit lately, too. It sounds yeah. so dark. You say you're 34, right? I'm 33. 33? Like, dude, yeah. I'd say Might as well be 40. Like, yeah. 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 The guy's know, old dude. as dirt. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, and another thing, too, like I've been thinking about trying to like stay healthy and shit, too. At least get like... Um, exercise you know I yeah fucking smoke cigs and drink beer obviously that's yeah, not like healthy the, but like the cigarettes dude, i just need like if it wasn't for skateboarding though i, I would be a total pile of shit i just because i wouldn't have any any i don't really like to, to run look, i don't really who likes like, to run like, who looks, besides yeah. for fucking fancy yeah. bro oh, dude well we he was getting jacked we up. can't we can't uh we can't base that off him because he's just yeah, he's, he's on another he's level yeah. so he's uh yeah, he's like whenever man. he was like, ah, quick seven. I was just like, <laughs> yeah, nah. dude, your face is like my face still. Like, I mean, nope. uh, I'm working out a little bit more regularly than you said you are, but like, uh, he's he's on he's training for a fucking Ironman. When so you guys like, were saying like, you know, we did a uh, hundred, oh, the hundreds, bro. Yeah, it's like Changed I'm just like lives. I'm just like, don't be a piece of shit. Just yeah. like go and do it. And it's, it's just that like, easy. And and it, and I mean, like waking up in the morning and like doing something makes me more motivated to not eat like shit. Well, well, I do think a big thing of it, like you get to the point very quickly with like whatever you're doing, working out, uh, changing your mindset. I think doing anything where 
the workout itself is not what you're doing anymore, but the fact that you're like, like I say it all the time. I wake up every morning with a little inner bitch voice inside oh, yeah. me, just like you don't have to do it today, dude. Hundred like, percent. You're chilling, like you did five laps. Like you're good. You took two. Like just. Oh. But like now, I'm addicted to beating like knocking that little bitch voice out every yeah. day like you know what i mean and like like when we were doing the hundreds i think we said it when you were there uh like, dude, we're working out for 15 minutes yeah. literally like 15 minutes a day and then we're walking down the street like when i'm at work and i'm that like is i'm better funniest. than you i'm better than you and it's just that, like looking back on that's it now. the funniest yeah. that's what that's what made me think about it i'm just like you know just something small like that yeah. to like get it going dude, and that's what i that's what i need at least is just like i'm always the type of person who is competitive like always looking for an edge whether it's yeah. justified or no not. matter what like, you're yeah, just like exactly. oh, I'm gonna be in golf today. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, exactly. Just get right. a little bit of fire on oh, there, dude. I, dude, I'm, once you get done like exercising or whatever, too, you feel like a fucking total badass. You like, do. You feel like you feel the, good about yourself and confident and all that shit, and you're ready to get the rest of your day started. I know you can't. I mean, there's nothing else to there's nothing else to even worry about. Yeah. Um, all right, let's get it started. you this last time who made that for you ryan drish shout out ryan drish whoever you are out there he's a uh, guy that i went to high school with that you know he just like dabbles in everything and he's good at everything sick i did a clothing line before and he like you know made a lot of my designs for that he uh i'm someone who tries to keep it in my inner circle like if there's someone who does something that i need done of people that i know I want to pay them to do it. You know what I mean? I just want to like kind of keep that flowing through them. So I hit him up and I was like, I want an intro song that is kind of like shook ones. As soon as you told me that, I was like, I mean, again, this dude is just chalking up W's in my book. I was like, and he sent me that and I was just like, this is exactly it. Mm -hmm. And I've never had anything where I one take Jake. He just never, never any designs or anything like that. The only other person that is for sure, like a, uh, a uh, guaranteed home run is Dirty Bird. You know, uh, he does a lot of my designs. Like, I'll give him some fucked up sketch that I like. It looks like chicken scratch. Mm-hmm. And I'll be yeah. like, this is what I want, dude. Go nuts. And he'll send me something back like six hours later. And I'm just like, yes, this, yes. Bang, this, <laughs> this is, is what that I dude want. puts in a lot of fucking work. Dude, yeah, and it, it just falls everywhere. out of him. It yeah. just falls out of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so what he's that again. Way. I feel bad that I'm. I like, don't really know him. I yeah. know of him. I've met him before. He uh, uh, maybe like a visual artist. Like, yeah. not just like, but like yeah. he's an artist in the city. Like he he messes around in the back streets and like nice. you know he just has a uh, you know he's a well respected artist in the city and like Fuck he yeah. he did a lot of the uh, the painting at One Up um, and he does he has work everywhere mm-hmm. and I don't know, dude. I hit him up. He he's just a super cool dude and. Uh, I was like, you know, I'm looking for a logo. He was like, all right, bet. Like, I hit you up in a couple hours. Hit me up, and I was like, this. Couple hours. Yeah, like, this is exactly what I want. It literally, because he just cranks them out on them iPads, and it's like, you know, he could do shit so quick. That yoga dude that I was uh, mentioning before, Yoga Ralph, he was getting these, like, <laughs> I love that because I'm yoga. a yoga guy and like, dude, yoga Ralph is just like, I'm big into, uh, I, there's this one instructor who's like, if loves Tupac and they're like, if you're doing yoga and you love Tupac, I bang with you. Cause there's not a lot of us out oh, there, yeah. which like, that so is like, Ralph. Yeah. I was going to say, I got to feel like my man, Ralph million is percent. That is us. Ralph. Yeah. He is just like, uh, he, you know, he's playing Mac Miller. He's playing like, you know, fucking, you know, there's all kinds of good Shout shit being played, but Ralph. Yeah, he right. was getting these, like, so he was doing these drop in yoga classes for, you know, a few months and he was getting like ridiculous artwork done. Like, uh, for president's day, he had one on president's day. He got him as like Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> and then like, he had another one on like, uh, I think it was like Easter or something, but he had like a, a nun getting crossed up by like magic Johnson or something. <laughs> so Ralph's just a cut up. Like, yeah, yeah. So yeah, Ralph yeah. is the funniest person I know for sure. I got to get him on here again because he's also like, he is probably the most uh, 
him and Matt Christie from streets are people that motivate me more than anything, I think. Really? And, uh, he like Ralph has just like changed his life, but, um, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a guy that makes it seem attainable for everyone else to get to that point. You know what I mean? That's cool. Yeah. But it's important to have in life. It's important. Like no matter what the journey is, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you could have a role role model like Joe Rogan who looks, he's rich. He can do whatever he wants, but it's like, I want role, role models who are, in my circle. Exactly. You know what I mean? In your sphere, for sure. There's yeah. a lot of people who got Rogan as, the, as their role model. You know what I mean? And it's I nice mean, like, you get it. Tangible. You yeah, get it. It's why. like shooting for the stars, though. You're never, you know, like when you're a role exactly. model, someone popular and shit. And exactly. you know you're never going to get there. So you just <laughs> kind of like low key just get discouraged like every fucking yeah it's almost time. too much you know what yeah. i mean it's like you're setting yeah. it too much it's but like then you see ralph and, and yeah and it's like, like ralph oh, fucking fuck. he kills it he's the one who's like you know yoga is usually looked at as like a uh like a female hobby or something like that for the most part it mm-hmm. is nowadays it's opening up more so it's changing neighbors out here in the yoga oh game. i'm in yeah. yoga no, crazy I know, but, you're, but you're, it's you're, like, you're right yeah it's definitely had a stigma yeah a stigma time. before i mean if you think about it it's like oh yeah it's for tricks Ralph is like someone listening to like hood ass rap music his entire life, grew up in McKee sport and just out here saying like preaching the word of yoga, saying that it will change your life. And it really is like, my wife is fucking all about it today. I think she's going tonight, but it's just like, I don't know. It's a great, I need more time. yoga Ralph in my life. It sounds like I know we're going to get him on here again. Me Please. and him we're talking yeah. about <clears throat> You're not hate, into yoga. I, I, well, I was just about to say, I almost hate to admit it, but if there were anything else that I would like get into that is like active other than skateboarding, I think it would be yoga. I could, I could get down really? with yoga. I Dude, think, I think, it, well, I think. because it would help out so much for skateboarding Fuck too. Yeah. Look so at like, Niger or look at, uh, uh what the fuck? Neen. Uh, yeah. Neen is oh, sponsored by fucking on it. And it's just like, he's a fitness. There's fucking- people that did it way before him too. And, and weren't mm-hmm. all like, out about it in in the open and shit too. I but, bet. Uh, well, that's also funny. He, he's oh. really changed his life too. That dude, Neen. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. The evolution of like at least in athletics and like athletic training. Like you go like the stigmas and how those have fallen. Like you hear about like Lynn Swan doing like ballet. Yeah, the ballet and exactly. Stuff, and he was the only one. Yeah. But that's like that's the. Lynn Swan did ballet so that like who Najee Harris probably is doing yoga now. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just like the predecessor. So it's like, it's cool to see that it's like always kind of been in there at least. It, it, yeah. That's always, a good point but for a while. No, but, that is, that's yeah. a good to see point. It grow and change like anything else. You know what I mean? I don't um, know. Najee Harris in your yoga class. You imagine walking in there, that dude's in there just like, <laughs> who is that? Oh, bro, <laughs> you're right. You're not Steelers first round pick running back out, bam, a big pick, but hopefully going to make a big impact on the <laughs> roster this year. It's crazy. It's crazy to me that, that you don't know that. Cause I don't follow the draft really at all. And yeah. I like oh, a thousand percent. He just, aware of that. he just got picked Thursday night dog. Welcome to the squad. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It was like, uh, in a non-traditional Steeler pick in terms of like Steelers are oh. usually kind of like run of the mill. Like, uh, he's the one who was doing the party for the homeless shelter. Exactly. Dude. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, that shows you how like much I just no, like, but no, right. He went, went right past. You don't yeah. even know anything about sports, dude. Look but, at you. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know what he's really up to. <laughs> you, know you know the good shit right he's now. really up to. I mean, football is cool, but like that, his story about being homeless and yeah, all, fuck all yeah. the work he wants to do for well, that. Well, that's cool. Good cool. for him. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Stillers. Yeah. Um, Let's go. Uh, <laughs> Still <laughs> <no> football. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, don't make me pull my Letterman jacket right there. Not a big deal. All four years. Uh, but, uh, so like, listen, before, whenever, I came on your podcast. I did not know anything about you guys. Uh, I listened to one podcast with Steel Gray, and it was the perfect introduction to what your podcast is. Because okay. whenever I, I don't know how to describe your podcast. You know what I mean? It's it's a silly goose time, but it's also like it's the uh, how did how did she. The uh, I, I was going to say Steel Gray probably as well as uh, one of the any other anybody's that rock with us Miss Beans the profoundly stupid is profoundly probably, stupid yeah the, the best way to describe yeah, the anybody that's a golden way to basically yeah. put it 
It's everything uh, I want out of a conversation. I want goofy talks about Jean-Claude Van Damme, but I also (laughs) want like, you know, a quick life lesson about like, you know, you know, grocery shopping or, you know, uh, like the conversation about, you know, uh, males participating in like birth control. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like I was, whenever I listened to that, I was like, fuck, like this is crazy. (laughs) Right. I was like, this is a, this is a wild talk. We recorded it. I was thinking the same thing, dude, because that's like a large part of our show is, uh, at least the, like we kind of have two different styles of episodes, but the ones you're alluding to, like the ones with the anybody's kind of the people who really bang with our show. Um, we just feel like we're a place where anybody can come and just do whatever they want creatively as long as it's all kind of like out of love and respect. So do you have like an elevator pitch? The profoundly stupid that kind of does too. But I mean, like if you're getting someone, if you want to explain your podcast to someone in a minute, like you obviously there, you don't always have time to be like, honestly, I think it's kind of weird. We've been kind of trying to figure that one out. And honestly, I'm not embarrassed to say, I think we're kind of still figuring that one out. Like, uh, I think we have, we have like two parts, you know, we like the, uh, whole interview process of like interviewing, uh, local Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh people that are creative people, or I've always wanted to try and get someone who like, um, did like a crazy, crazy career change. Like they went from doing something, and then all of a sudden they're like in the nuclear energy uh, field. I don't yeah. know. Um, those interviews would be like one section. Then the other section would be more of the intimate episodes where we kind of interact with what we call the anybodies. And those are like our close listeners um, that kind of interact with us with the show. Yeah. I don't was know. That, how would you, that how would you put minute? it? No, I mean like, <laughs> yeah, no, no. I think that that's, yeah, that I don't have an problem. elevator yeah. pitch for no. you, honestly. I think like, I got go. it. <laughs> Rob, you hit the nail on the head. We are, uh, a podcast that does two different styles of episodes where all of those episodes are based on this listener and interactive base that we call the anybody's half of our episodes are episodes where those anybody's kind of pick segments that we do or segments that they want to come on here and do, or we have interview episodes where, uh, we, like Rob said, kind of identify people similar to how you do Chad after talking to you a little bit, just people whose stories that we bang with or we respect on like yeah. the journey of life or making this podcast or whatever we're doing. Um, and so we talk to those people and those are two different styles of apps, but all of those go into the fact of like, uh, you just have a common theme along of it, which like, is like doing all this different stuff in your life to kind of feel fulfilled. Cause we're really confident that, uh, it's not one or two lanes or like one or two pies that kind of like scratch all the itches in life, at least for us. It's, yeah going out there, trying a bunch of shit, throwing it against the wall. Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't, but always like that feeling of, uh, we're definitely like definitely out there to try and grab the attention of, uh, the type of crowd that is, you know, say they are creative and they got this creative itch or thing that they're doing. And maybe they're, you know, they're doing it for the first time and they don't know how other people are going to react. Yeah. And we're kind of like, trying to give those types of people like a platform um, to sort of come and talk to us and hang out with us because we're kind of talking about those same issues. Like maybe you're not, maybe you're like scared to put out this new talent that you got or this new project you've been working on. Say you're nervous because you're, you don't know how people are going to react to it. Say you think that there's going to be somehow a negative reaction to it and you're scared to put it out there. We're trying to, be here to say, Hey, we get you. Yeah. But <laughs> it's like, everyone's it's, trying, every, everyone got to start somewhere and it's like, yeah, you know, it's a good starting point. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, it's a, it's similar minded people. It's like a, it's like a welcoming environment. I, I dude, me personally, I'm just into meeting people like that because yeah. I, I'm kind of going through the same shit in my life right now too, where like, yeah, for I'm sure. Doing creative stuff. And like, I know the feeling of, putting it out there for the first time. And yeah. And you're like, is this something what, that, yeah. Not like, knowing what people are going to think about it. Yeah. So, something that you work on forever and you're like, you know, it, it, how is this going to be received? Yeah. But it's, it's like, you guys are like an incubator, like your show is like yeah. an incubator. That's, it's like, that's a great way to put it. I think what, and again, the show has changed a lot over the 13, 14 months we've been doing it or whatever. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people have this creative itch or this outlet, these talents, these interests to explore other aspects of their life outside of their job, their family relationship or whatever, whether that's rapping, cooking, interior design, makeup, like whatever it may be. 
we feel that the reason, which is totally normal, that a lot of people don't show that to the world or present that stuff is because most of the time you're only able to present that to your immediate circle of people because of social media. Social media is great, but one of two things is always going to be in the back of your mind when you post it on strawberry cuz is are my friends and family really telling me like what's good yeah and will i really even make it anywhere just please like will i even get any any traction or like true outreach of it if it's just my family and friends the anybody can do this show is a place where we get we basically have a objective audience of anonymous anybody's yeah who will kind of let you know either way if you're up to snuff like all we're asking for is like come correct like yeah like, i like your that shit ready to go and, i like, think that's what's so like attractive it. about it is that like you have this like uh you know part of the reason podcasting is so fun is you know in the beginning whenever it wasn't like this whole saturated market where like every you have a podcast for anything if you want to watch the fucking bachelor they have a podcast analyzing it yeah there's but so many of those types out there they said that there was like i think that there's there's over 10 million podcasts uh, single different podcasts out but <laughs> they were talking about on, on uh, rogan or something like that which is insane but it's like you have you know it's like you have this podcast and you know, it's, it's a way that uh, you have all these people like, like they're almost cult followings. You know what I mean? Podcasts, podcast channels have caught cult fall. Jesus can't even talk. I mean, that's a tough one. That's a tongue twister. Yeah. 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 Podcast channels caught cult followings. followings. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? They do. And it's like, it's so interesting to think about that because you guys have like these, you know, people with these different monikers that, that chime in each week and follow along with it. And it makes it feel like you're part of it. It's like, if you watch like Tom Segura and like your mom's house, like there's inside jokes that you get. And like, that's what's so like welcoming and fun and it's light and it, and it makes you feel that you could be you know just silly on there and like you know and we we always from the jump said like who wouldn't want to be shouted out on their favorite podcast yeah and who wouldn't want to have the ability to like uh like write in anonymously because yeah. that takes away a lot of like the uh the filter the pressure stigma. Of right exit pressure is even better yeah right yeah, yeah it's you a, just let it let it fly yeah it's like oh i don't want these i don't want them to think that i'm being like an asshole but it's right. like i want them to know it's like the comment section in a restaurant exactly but at it's a restaurant yeah, yeah, you know yeah, I, mean? yeah I didn't know that's where the com- comment section is not usually referred to they have uh time, i know that yeah no they have a uh, comment card do you remember whenever that was a thing comment cards oh the box. that was before social media and shit like that suggestion box yeah suggestion box that's what it was yeah 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 you were in retail a bunch skater you probably all over some some solid suggestion box moments (laughs) i don't even think about retail anymore dude yeah it sucks for sure good for you it's a pit um i uh so whenever i you know come full circle it's like whenever you guys ask me to come on your podcast like i listened to that one episode i kind of got a feel that like of what you guys did like you had this like commonality between everyone where it's like you know we're all just like out here doing it but we do like you know you guys have certain segments that kind of keep like a you know like a guideline through it all but like i like that it's tangential it just made me feel it was like a welcoming environment but it's like i start listening to it even more now because i got through the first steel gray episode and it's like i like that i could pick one episode and it's about this i like i could pick another episode and you guys are like you know talking over movies but you still like you know throwing current events it's just like i don't know it's like a current event like you know kind of just like a fun show but i I can't really think of a way to describe it i feel like (laughs) it's hard to do which is awesome in my opinion like again do we need to like have a concise like you have to have a direction and like but like again like as corny as it is to say it's like yeah this organized chaos is like the whole vibe of our show where it's just like the pace works the interaction works it all kind of it's no forced feeling of just like this like we're able to talk about movies or grocery shopping or all this yeah, sh- it's, stuff. It's not like stuffy. Like who is ever rocking with us is passionate about it and just like invested in yeah, it. Yeah. These like, people just want to, Oh, like what are we talking about this right, week? Right. And it's like, you're like, damn, that's, it, it's cool because you know, for me, I kind of have that ability to like, to, you know, dip my toe into like, you know, just bizarre conversations and focus on them. Like, you know, and we'll, we'll usually do that. But like my main goal is to try to like, you know, unpack everyone's lives in a entertaining way for people to like learn about them and learn about how they got there and like the shit that they had to deal with. And, you know, basically just like almost like a cheat sheet, how to like do this all. But it's, it's like, you know, I, I, I wish that I, 
was able to like work in like, Oh, I'm going to have like, you know, this segment this week and like all that. And I, I'm sure I can, but it's just like, I mean, you got segments, you do your what's in the cup. I do I, like that's I mean, that's, it's just, those are coming. But from I'm you. talking yeah. about like, I'm talking about like, you know, or like analyzing grocery shopping. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but again, it's weird to like think about something like that. Cause that's not something I would have ever thought to talk about on the show, but shout out JW yoke. Who's just uh, an, anybody who also happens to be like one of my homeboys, uh, that just, he started on beater beat those cheeks, which is like our flagship like yeah. uh, segment. And then, which is totally, as you say, what do you say? Silly goose. Yeah. Yeah. I silly like goose yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, you know, I'm all about the jargon. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's like our, it's a real silly goose segment. And then he comes in, he's like, I want to do life advice. Like you guys should take submissions. Like you guys should do life advice. Yeah, like, I love that. You, that well, you have cool to do it idea. with us, dude. And he just like, people loved it. We'll be doing it. I did. I loved it. Like sure. I, I loved how like, you know, it was like, you know, you guys are still like dicking around, but it's like, you're really like taking the time to think about, these like random topics. And that's kind of like what I tried to do with the research episodes. Whenever the pandemic happened, it's like, you know, I picked like fucking pyramid schemes. So I just like hardcore researched it. And I like <laughs> really went in my thoughts about like, you know, the fucked up things about them. Right. And like, and I was just genuine about it. And it's like, I like that. I don't want to like always talk about who fucking got elected and like what the fuck no. is going on there. I want to have serious, meaningful, thoughtful conversations about weird shit. Like so, yeah. I, I say this yeah. all the time and I'm swear I'm going to let you talk at some point in these couple <laughs> of hours. Skater, yeah, but good. like, um, like what you're talking about right there, Chad, like politics, like daily life, all that shit. Like to me, that's like an iPhone, right? Or like yeah. cell phones we were talking about before. Cause not everybody has iPhones, unfortunately, yeah. but um, <laughs> <laughs> so you can only take your iPhone like out into the world for so long before you like need to come back to a charger. Like yeah. if our show can be a charger for people's iPhones, like that, that's like the best thing that we could hope people could get out of it. It's just like, I like, just, like unplug for, like well, the opposite plug in for a little bit and just like get away from all like the fucking serious ass shit. But like, if we want to talk about serious ass shit like that, that's great. Yeah, it's open there too. too. Yeah, for sure. But it's like not overly saturated with that seriousness. Right. And because it's all over the place, like I, again, don't really care, but like, skater and we still there's a lot of time going into that to plan yeah. and prep and like oh, that's, 100%. Why, like, that's yeah. why like we envy like i don't know how you do an episode like i mean what do you do like 50 a year like, it, like yeah probably yeah, around yeah, there dude, like we probably do we take a lot. we do 20 again shows change we used to do two times a week we're like at one time a week now um let's but, get it wait now let's put a pin in this and okay. get into like the you know the start of the show but before we do this i do an opening segment with everyone it's called what's in the cup All right, what's in your cup? I have Coors Light. <laughs> 24 big, ounce. It's a big boy, yeah. Thank you. appreciate it. Is that the one that I bought? This is the one you got, yeah. Oh. It's it's bigger than the ones I had that I brought with me, so I uh, I, I had to crack. I tried to get you a 40. They didn't have one. <laughs> oh, I did, yeah. They yeah. didn't have one. I had a lot of 40s. I, mean, I have not drank a 40 in so long. I figured you would say that, but I figured I wouldn't even have... Like it would have just been funny to. to I would. I would, I would still picture. drink it. I mean, I'm not against it. I remember someone gave me a 40 in high school, and I was just like, it was like the the worst experience with it because <laughs> I drank like maybe a quarter of it while it was still like some. And these weren't even cold. Do you, these was, were. Do you remember what it was like? What like was it? It was a Hurricane 40. Oh I was gonna say so. It's malt liquor too. Yeah, it was a Hurricane 40 cold, experience. But yeah. the thing that was Warm fucked up is that like you know this wasn't whenever we were like partying at someone's house with a fridge. We had a backpack full of them. Yes. So it was like <laughs> oh yeah, God. it's a little bit cold. It's like the equivalent if you hold it out the window. Yeah. You know what I mean? Your man's got like one <laughs> little freezer ice pack on the bottom. And they're like, like oh, like, have, yeah. have this Hurricane 40, sip a few of it, and then it just becomes warm. And I'm just like, I ain't drinking this. Oh, and you don't boot? Yeah. Like, you're not into and, it? And it's, so it's like, looking yeah, back, I, 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 can't, I can't even believe we used to drink those, dude. What was, like, the common, so uh, what was, like, the common beer in your high schools? In high school? Yeah, like, did you guys have, like, uh, a Miller Light? Like, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm talking about, like, a party beer. Like, you go there and oh, it's so like, that's Natty Light. Kids from, in uh, my college, school though. would be getting, like, Keystone Ice and oh. Keystone Light. Yeah, we had the, like, we had the Stones. Key yeah. Premiums. Bro, yeah. What dude, was it? The Keystone can, oh, the orange can. Pennsylvania Lager. Dude, Pennsylvania Ice. 
I, it's like I didn't even drink this, but all these fucking people that I, I was drink, friends I, with. I can't. I still Ugh. can't drink. You guys any need that some shit, better dude. friends so in high gross. school. Some rich friends. With they some were bigger just houses, like, bigger beer budgets. So. Ugh, just ridiculous. <laughs> it was a ridiculous but, time. I mean, and it's like you know that was part of the reason that I never like do, like uh, dove deep into it because it's like I wasn't drinking fucking warm beers in a basement. Good like, for you. Yeah, like, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. sit there and watch a movie, Fuck but it's yeah, like yeah, I'm going to drink a fucking ginger ale or Turner's tea. I might throw some grenadine in. Yeah. Get real wild. In this I'm gonna place. eat all the maraschinos <laughs> from your fucking dad's oh, little you, bar. You can have them. Fuck. What? Uh, so now I, I need to know the beginning you didn't ask of me this. What was in my cup? Oh, you? did I? Oh my god! <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Oh, oh. I'm not used to it. And, <laughs> and I, I mean, I'm doing you a favor. I know. I, feel like. I know. I'm not used to it though. <laughs> I'm on my toes a little bit. What with we two were saying people. is this: you go, you did BD and Billy Hoyle, but BD that, Billy Hoyle. I did. Uh, yeah, the dude. the hounds. You know, I did okay. Mikey and Bob. But that's right. Mikey very rare Bob. is there more than one person because I feel that it's distracting. But I feel like it's organized chaos. Not like you guys. Are, you know what I mean? It's it's well, good. Yeah, we'll make we'll make your brain hurt by yeah. the time we're out here, dude. <laughs> well, what's in your cup? Uh, thug jug. Thug jug of Turner's A1 tea. since day one. Didn't yeah. even have to, did, what, didn't even have to push it on no one. He no. said, I want that thug jug. I need it. I got Ice cold. It. Yeah, oh, bro, perfect. Thank I you. couldn't drink so, another one today because I had one the other day. What's your, the other day? Okay, so like, do you, are you on, again, we can bleep this out if you want. No, like, I'll say you, it yeah. all day. Are you day, are you a daily, are you on Turner's every day? Fuck no. Time? No, okay. I can't yeah, drink okay. it every day. Right. Yeah, okay. I was no. going to say, I think we found the first step to your workout. I try journey. to just, yeah. uh, I try to just stick with water now. You know what I mean? I don't really, I don't drink too, too much pop. Like, you know okay. what I mean? But I, I love a, uh, I love green tea, you know, but right. I've been just yeah. been trying to stick to water. That's like, this is like a beer to me. Like I never have this anymore. Yeah. So like as soon as you asked me, you were like, it's hard to on. have because it's like, you know, it's, it's just a, a big sugary drink. Right. But, uh, you know, Turner's does make an unsweetened, just a black tea. But it's hard to find. The only place I've ever found it was Pen Mac in the Strip. Shout out, oh, Pen, one shit. of my favorite uh, yeah, local. Who businesses. doesn't love it? Oh my god! Yeah, who doesn't Shout love it? I uh, interviewed the cheesemonger there, Adam. Yeah, uh, he, it was a wild episode. He brought me a fucking cheese spread of all this wild shit, and we were just. On here, just oh, eating and talking you about it because you said that's your thing. You want to start doing more like food yeah. And I want like shit. all kinds yeah, of yeah, weird. Yeah, right. I want to experience it, but I need to know uh, where you guys started this podcast. You know what I mean? Like, like how did this? Uh, like, like how did you start into this and kind of take this torch from uh, the original creators? Yeah. Um, mm. um, I'll start it off, and then I'll let you, you love know, it. I'll open it up, basically. Is- um, so I met Nick, uh, when I moved into the brew house, which would be the beginning of 2020, January, 2020. Yeah. And, uh, shit hit the fan in like what March or something mm-hmm. officially St. Patrick's and day. And that's when you guys, they, I hadn't, I actually hadn't even met Nick at this point. I don't think in March. But I'll let you take it away from there because that's where you go. <laughs> he said, I want to open it up for you. Right, that's yeah, when you okay. guys started your so, shit. So um, in case you missed that, Skater opened up with, we just had a pandemic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, no. So I don't know how far we want to go back into like the original, but Skater and I just finished like our first season together on the Anybody Can Do the Show, the third full season yes. of the show, which was actually ironically not started by us, started by our executive producer, OG homies, Andy Feathers, and Fancy Bread, who are two local creatives in their own rights, who've kind of had the name for this show for a long time, finally fleshed it out into a podcast. Uh, the three, myself and those two, did two seasons together. They both decided to kind of take a step back to work more closely on their, or more dedicated to their personal yeah. creative journeys, and they'll pop in and out whenever they want, and definitely are just like our... Uh, uh, Mr. Miyagi and Splinter. Of, so uh, yeah. you guys knew, like, did... Did you know them before? I met Eli in the elevator, like of our apartment building. The apartment uh, building that me, Eli, and Skater lived in is like the massive, if not the number one reason, like why the show happened and existed. Just because, like, it's so really it was cool going spot. on before you knew him. Uh, no, it had not. So we did episode uh, okay. one, season one together. So, oh, um, okay. It was okay. originally going to be like a YouTube show, like uh, if you're familiar with like uh, the rundown from Barstool. Yeah, obviously, it was kind of. Again, it started as they had a meeting with Portnoy unofficially in New York via a connection. Yeah. So they were like, we have a meeting for this idea. We don't have anything blessed out for the idea. So like the three of us, they needed a camera guy. So they, Eli knew me in the building. We Did that really happen? They had a meeting with Portnoy? So 
If you yes. don't want to talk about this, we don't have to. Um, the, the meeting never happened. Okay. So, like, yeah, but uh, they were they had a one degree of separation away from Portnoy, like a, a, a fellow artist that Eli's con- uh, connected with, who's okay. like Portnoy's like uh, best homie from growing up. One, he's been in a few videos. I forget his name right now, but he's okay. like this crazy artist who lives on Martha's Vineyard, which is this tiny little island like off of Massachusetts. It's just a wild cat. Eli knows him through the game and was like, yo, this weekend, Portnoy is around if you want to be in New York. Like they went up there. They kind of never met with him like for whatever reason and yeah. then, uh, just never connected and came back home. But the whole reason for that is they knew they had the Anybody Can Do the Show, but they didn't know what it was. And they needed like to flesh it out in classic their style in two days, like yeah. 11th hour. Like that's, <laughs> that's just how it works. I love but, that though. Yeah. But um, again, that's a roundabout way of saying like the show started as one thing and it's definitely kind of changed a little bit as we just finished, as we like to skate, Skater Rob's rookie season in season Dude, three. am I the only one that thinks like <clears throat> the beginning of the pandemic was, feels like an eternity ago. It does. Yeah, it was wild. So like when that's I said that this all, all this shit started. That's when we dropped our first pandemic. episode. Like it seems so long ago. One and week I didn't even know you then. Yeah, it is. It's, I mean, it's wild to think about that. It's like the whole last year, like didn't exist really. Uh, it was kind of bizarre, but it, in some aspects. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I mean, I don't know. I, if I feel, I know without the lockdown, like I wouldn't have been able to be as, in tune with the show and shit and like, no, oh, like, yeah, yeah, it's definitely like, beneficial it's for sure. For Bro, sure. I paid off debts. You know what I yeah. mean? Like <clears throat> this yeah. thing, I just focused on this. It's just like, you know, there was definitely some silver line. I mean, I'm a glass half full guy. As I say, it's just what type of chuckle. Yeah. You? You I'm, a, I mean? I'm a glass half full. Like I'm, I'm making things happen. You know what I mean? Regardless. Right. Pandemic, not a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> I think of, I think of our show as like a, uh, a pandemic hobby, you know, like that's how I started out thinking of it, you know? Yeah. And then, um, we just kind of did a, a lot of episodes and all of a sudden it was like, okay, into more. I'm a podcaster now. For sure. Yeah. yeah. It's way more than a, it's way more than a hobby. Now. It's easy to it's like, more. yeah, it's more than a hobby, but, um, yeah, it, it's totally one of those just pandemic things. I don't know. Pandemic and- dude, like, I started doing so much new shit. I fucking started it. baking sourdough bread. Let's go. Yeah, Where's yeah. the samples? No love. <laughs> like, yeah. I got the like, starter. Yeah. For some people, for some, obviously it was a really bad thing, but for some people, it like opened new doors for them. Yeah, or for new sure. New ideas. Or just, I started riding a bike. I started baking, yeah. you know, build a puzzle or two. You know, there were some good things. Dude, Caught up yeah. on some movies. Right. I mean, Skater, you're the different. That's why you're on the show. He's, I interviewed Skater just like as an early episode in season three. Yeah. And then I was doing like a one man thing at that point when that's how it started. Uh, Fancy yeah. Brett and Andy Feathers took a step back. No. Hated the one man. So <laughs> hated it. Hated it. Now, whenever you two were both like, you know, coming up, like, did you. So. This is this is why I usually step away from two people because it's hard to go to one person and another. Yeah. It's so yeah. we yeah. have Skater Rob. And we have Neighbor Nick. What's yes. up? Okay. <laughs> we both talked at the same time. Sorry. <laughs> so I, I'm curious to know that because like, I didn't really get to like dig into you guys before. So it's like, Nick, like whenever mm-hmm. you grew up, like, did you have any sort of like idea of this? Like you said, you needed, you said they needed someone to do camera work. Right. It's like, were you into this shit growing up at all? No. I mean, I've always like, I mean, uh, I've always thought that I had a creative portion of like when I was a kid, I did everything from freestyle rap. Like that was my main thing when I was like a kid, I was, swear I was, to God, yeah, bro. Like don't the snow angel had bars. Like, so I like, don't think like, I like, mean, you I, want, you want it? You got uh, a couple. No, go ahead. Uh, oh, no, I'm actually going to put it on the lip. I'm going to put a plug in no, for, we did a rap battle episode. If you haven't gotten there yet, <laughs> me, Andy feathers and fancy bread all went over, um, a pretty classic beat in some circles. Uh, so go check it out. What? I think it's in season one, uh, episode seven or eight. It's uh, the rap battle. It's the last like two oh or three minutes. Oh my god! Yeah, so, I can't wait. To yeah, Andy Feathers to won. What, we like let everybody vote. Like uh, He's Andy a poet, Feathers though. won. Yeah, I mean, bro, he 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 came with it. Uh, Eli will say that he lost, or Fancy Bread will say that he lost due to uh, his recording not being as uh, uh, well produced as ours. <laughs> like, which was his fault. But um, like, so, but yeah, no, go go listen to anybody can do so. Season one, seven or eight, you can hear my. See, bars. I love See that. If you want more, so you just been like someone that tried out a bunch of shit. Yeah, man. dude, and. And uh, again, I, the main reason I'm on it is because I got to a point in my life where I like graduated college, got a job, was like doing good in the job, checking all the boxes and just like wasn't feeling fulfilled at the end of the day is the yeah. short way of saying it. And was uh, Fancy Bread and Andy Feathers are two guys that outside of podcasting, creative, whatever, just in life have taught me to say just like, 
fuck it and just go do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, That's try why. it. Exactly. So uh, moving that from like into my life led me into filming a video with them for like eight hours into like the morning one night before I had to go to work into <laughs> they were like my role started as like the Jamie from Rogan. Just like yeah. I'd be on the, on the mic, like kind of keeping things together. If you think we're organized chaos, imagine these two, like on the mic, they now were just, you're running the ship. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then I just, uh, yeah, ran a little mutiny on the ship, kicked them out and like took over steering and brought skater with me. So, wow. yeah, I like that. Mm hmm. So, and now Rob, what about you? Did you have any, I mean, obviously, you know, um, you rub a skater. <clears throat> I'm sure you have your experiences with cameras and filming and shit like that. Oh yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. Like pretty much only a few years after I started skating, I was filming and shit too. Just, uh, me and my friends. And then, um, yeah, I mean, fucking fast forward, like 15 years later or something, it became like, a pretty real thing. Like we made skate videos for, um, for the skate shop one up and it became, I don't know. It was fun. Don't get me wrong, but it, it became more than just like, Oh, that's just something that you do while you're skating. Like it became yeah. sort of like, I don't want to say a job cause it wasn't a job, but like we were doing it for real. Yeah. And we were became being serious, serious about it. Yeah. 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 A couple your homies sure. went pro like, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, dude, some of my homies are really, really good at skating. Yeah. <laughs> and they made it places. And the others that didn't make it far in skateboarding, they're still really yeah, fucking still good. good. <laughs> still real still real, real good. And and yeah, like uh so yeah, I'm I'm used to like working with cameras and shit like that, even though I don't do it as much anymore. Um and then <clears throat> I don't know, man, the back of my head within the last like few years, I'd say, I have been like thinking about like what it would be like to do a podcast or just like something similar where it's like a platform where you just kind of, I was, I was thinking about it skate related, yeah. like just like some kind of thing where you just, I don't know, fucking talk about skateboarding in Pittsburgh or something. Yeah, just see where it goes. Yeah. Just see where it goes. So whenever uh neighbor here had me on for that little interview um, after that, I was like, well, maybe, it's like, maybe this is kind of like, this is where, this is my opportunity to fucking like try and do this shit. Yeah. Meaning podcasting and talking with a microphone in front of your face. That's another thing. Like there's so many skills that you learn while doing a podcast other than just yeah. doing the podcast. You, you learn how to like speak into a microphone and learn try and not say um all the time oh, yeah That's not say like. um all the time even though we're all like guilty of it <laughs> so funny you say um because like but, me yeah. saying i'm um, doing a one-man show is legitimately the reason that skater is now on the show full-time oh yeah it's the worst <laughs> feeling ever he was the first interview i ever did by myself yeah. and uh i it was so comfortable that i, forgot, I was yeah, saying yeah, was... um that i was like dude i just need you there because like if i talk to you you don't even have to say anything like yeah i won't say um yeah I'll you won't say so um or like, it, was, yeah, right. it was easy for me to come along because like I knew I was just going to be that sidekick dude, or just like you know the whatever the behind You're like the, the wave machine. Kind of, yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> I come on, so like, there was, was no a wave pressure pool. for me to come on. Yeah. It's like you hear Except that thing, wah, wah, yeah. and then it's just like put in a good little Skater, idea. Skater's the guy with the trumpet, yeah. the Kentucky Derby. Like, yeah, 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 just the, in hey, the back gassing me up. You guys, uh, you guys, betters? Uh, not on horses, on everything else. But okay. yeah, 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 yeah. I threw a little bit of money on a, on a horse, Did, didn't win. Oh man, oh uh, shit! But so it's yeah, all right. like every, you and anybody, you and anybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. I, I always kind of. We had a good gambling episode for the Super Bowl this year. We have a, we have a. I didn't a, get there we yet. Have a tout. We have a tout. So uh, he came in hot, hit a bunch. Of props I heard us. you guys talking about that. Yeah. They said that you saw him at the casino or something. I, dude, this random cat that I just like <laughs> ran into at the casino that just like like how old? Uh, close to my our age. Okay, like, yeah, between thirty. It's like and a fifty-five year old guy just yeah, 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 no, wish, That would be the only thing that would make it. Better, All right, Nikki, but, like, this is what you need yeah, to do. Uh, yeah. Doc he would props, charge for Mick time. Mulligan. Like, it's yeah, not. just the one and only shout out. That uh, I heard you guys talking about that, but uh, that that's pretty sick. So funny. like that dude was just like you just were like, hey, let's talk about better. Yeah, and he was I like, love oh, that. For sure. That's what it. I do. That's yeah. what I want. I just like will just talk to random people. I'll just meet them. Hey, and just you just gotta shoot your shot. Fuck right. it. Okay, so now I feel bad. I, I'm gonna tell you this. Tell me. He's not a random person. He's just one of my homeboys who doesn't <laughs> want his alias. Who doesn't want his alias out there? Because so, I was like, oh man, the one thing I look up, not the one Damn. thing, but I really look oh, up to chat funny. about is not giving a fuckness about like 
like Elisa Deke, all these, uh, Burt Kreischer, all these people that you just like send DMs to or like even getting merch stickers, you just do whatever you say. Fuck it if people don't care. Yeah, um, they don't do it. They don't but do like, it. Yeah, like my homeboy it's is just right. like, my homeboy is built for gambling no for the mic for the uh, podcast like like you talk about like did we ever want to do a podcast he's actually the person in my life who was like i've always wanted to do one like, <laughs> like he was always the one and he's just like he's killing it just like in civilian life you know what i mean like yeah so in his like, wedding in a couple weeks yeah you can't like muddy the water no, but he was like i was like you need to be i need you involved somehow he's like i'll do like a game but like i want to get <laughs> like yeah, but he went full full alias so like and he, he hit some bets uh, a bunch dude like wow yeah, yeah and they were all big plus money bets so. yeah it's like a scary world it's like dangerous because uh my first experience betting was with comma worthy you, f- you know, familiar with him Mm-mm. he's a ufc fighter from pittsburgh okay uh i've been friends with him for a while i started you know i got in on the ground floor before he got into ufc so i still <laughs> get the time of day right. yeah, yeah, yeah so i'm yeah, still yeah. here Fuck but yeah. he got signed to the ufc after just like years of you know really like working to like get there Came in and uh, fought this dude who was favored. I think I think Common was like a plus four fifty or something. You hammered him, bro. I put ten on him to knock him out, and I put a hundred on the money line. Let's go. And he knocked him out. We're going to knocked dinner, him out clean. Let's I, go. I Capital came up like six hundred, and I was like, uh, "Let's bro. get it." Oh, bro. And See, that's why I don't gamble. Dude. It's dangerous because you know I was up, <laughs> uh, and then the next one, you know, I hit another two hundred dollar bet somewhere else, and I was like, "Let's get it, baby." Away. I'm quitting my <laughs> fucking job. Yeah. This is how you become uh, a pro and gambler. Then like five months in a row, ain't win a thing. Yeah, I just damn. had to stop. Uh, yeah, dude. But it's all right. Gambler's you know, hangover, dude. It's like anything else. Yeah. You got to just kind of keep it in check. Scared money don't make money, uh, though. Facts, you know what yeah. I mean? But uh, it's cool that like you know you know, full circle. It's like, that's kind of why I just say fuck it and just hit people up because it's like Elise Sadiq. I messaged that dude randomly. I, no chance he was going to read it. Mm-hmm. He said, fuck it. Why not? Right. And even though he was eating food and watching a playoff Toronto fuck game, it. I was happy to be there. Right. You know what I mean? It's just yeah, in that so. moment, I'm like soaking up that energy. It's like, that's all it is. It's and energy. That's why your show's dope because it's like, there's nothing contrived they're like trying too hard it's all like like it's all, like you I'm said transparent, you'll do interview ones you'll do the re- research ones yeah, yeah. just it's you just know like, that you just want to put episodes out now let me episodes. ask you this like it, being people who create podcasts it's like in the beginning were you very nervous about were you like overbearing on how you wanted it to be because in the beginning i was like oh i can't do one by myself yes cannot you know can't sit here and talk for ha- like an hour no one wants to hear me do this it's I like, think it's going to be two different answers for us because, uh, like I said, Skater, uh, the first episodes that we put out with Fancy Bread and Andy Feathers, we did like, shit, five or six test episodes that like the world will never hear. And yeah. then like, we ended up like picking and choosing a couple segments from all of those and making the first episode. Yeah. So like, we definitely grinded on like that and how it sounded. Like we were pretty, pretty anal about that. And that's still our two main, like definitely the main thing is like pretty anal about the sound or needing to upgrade it and keeping, <laughs> keeping it uh keeping it at a like just like making it sound like we're not just yeah, professional. throwing it out there right exactly so um yeah that's a long way of saying like yes we are very protective <laughs> of how it comes out me me i i am like no, you know no, what I, I mean like yeah, i get it sure. we don't edit anything like we're not like we have a beat button like we're not doing any gotcha shit like we told you like yeah. wake up the next day and you realize <laughs> Some like, gotcha yeah, shit. Yeah, dude, like that's what a lot of shit is right now when people yeah. are talking to people i do feel like Everyone's under a microscope. Right. I consume a ton of content, I feel like, like a bunch of podcasts and interviews and shit like that. And like, it's a very easy thing to think you can just like jump into and shit, but a lot of people just like want to get like some lame ass salacious shit out of it or yeah. just like catch people like off guard or whatever we, that's and that's why it. like you know it's 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 always gonna you know the cream is always gonna rise to the top with For it sure. you know what i mean it's like the people that are really gonna and that's the beauty you know it's a double-edged sword of all the saturation but that's the beauty of it it's like there's so many on it it keeps you on your fucking toes mm-hmm. because if you don't someone else is gonna do it right so it's like yeah. you know it's creative like you know, competitiveness, it's, it's tackling fuel, you know exactly. what I mean? Yeah. And you're just out there and it's like, I know that someone else is going to be doing episodes every week. So I'm like, fuck that. And it's like, why ain't I well, doing dude, it? It's like, like, I mean, if you want to boil it down to like a granule thing, it's like, we'd be competitors in this space. You know what I mean? Like, but like in terms of podcasting, but like you're someone that since you've been on our show and since we've been following you before that is like, you make us want to upgrade our shit and yeah. keep putting out more apps and like, just See, like, like, I don't feel that at all. That. Do you feel that like there's, there's competition as far as podcasts? Like I don't find, I don't find it as like a competition because 
you know, I feel that, uh, you know, look at, look at like any single person, like how many podcasts do you listen to? Listen to Burt Kreischer's podcast. If you listen to Burt Kreischer's podcast, yeah. you probably listen to Tom Segura's. You probably listen to Rogan's, Joey Diaz's. I think the same, I think the same way, dude. I, I don't, I don't see any competition. Many right. hands make light um, work. Like, I listen let's to so all many get it weird, out there. And I listen to so many like weird, like uh, obscure, like history related documentaries or uh, not documentaries, fucking podcasts that like no one else that I know is probably listening to that shit. It's like the world of podcasting is like the world of fucking. It's like going into a library. Like, yeah. Right. Like you right. find what you want. And once you find it, you get stuck on it. And then, or once you find something that leads you to your next one. Yeah, exactly. Like, and know, I, like, I guess my point was like, it's bad to look at it like competition. Like yeah. exactly like, yeah. I feel, like, where it's I just feel like, like people are doing a disservice to themselves because sure. it's like, you know, if you just don't associate yourself with other people, it's like, why you, why do you want to do that? It's that would like be the exact thing. Cause at the end, of, at the, end of the day, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. If you're just like comparing yourself to someone else at the end of the day, like, what are you in it for, bro? Are yeah. you in it to It's like, who the fuck am I? It's like really when you message it. me, it's like, you, you said, oh, I, I, I had to like work it up to message you. It's like, bro, like I'm in my basement right, but like, to yeah. just do it. Right. You know? yeah, yeah. Have you ever come across anybody though that you like, said no? Not, not even said no, but just like was a dick. Like unnecessarily. <laughs> like, yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's like, uh, we're so new in the journey still that it's like, I feel like, uh, it, it's easy to get caught up in. Like I just the, have people that people like could not want to do it. It's like, like there's people that are big timing that try to big time you. Right. And it's like people that I don't even know why they try to big time you. It's like, uh, I'm very transparent about this. Right. Like, uh, I interviewed, uh, I interviewed that Dean Bog dude. You know who that is? Mm-mm. He made these like videos about like neighborhoods and stuff like okay. that. And he was just like, you know, I kind of had a sour taste in my mouth after just the way he like, Carry you know, yourself. yeah, just the way like you carry yourself kind of like it was a good interview, but it's like, you know, like I don't find myself, you know, I'm never going to big time someone to do anything. Like if I, you know, the podcast is definitely growing, like it's definitely getting bigger. The people like, uh, I'm getting response from it, but it's like, I don't ever feel like, you know, oh, I don't have any time of day for mm-hmm. like that. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I right. never like had that mindset just because I think about it in the way that like, you know, if I was to, if I want to hit someone up, I would hope that they would, you know, if, if it's someone who was a big time person, I would hope that they would be respectful, not respectful, but I would hope they'd be willing enough to like, try to help out someone. Treat your neighbor as you want to be. Treated. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like eventually, I mean, at one point in life, you were where I was and you were hoping that someone's gonna, you know, just be cool yeah. about it. Yeah. I think, um, dude, that's kind of crazy. <clears throat> I think that's kind of why I like doing this uh, podcast in the sense that, I like being able to like possibly like uh, be available to someone to like shoot back ideas or like give feedback to someone or uh, just talk to them about um, like what they're trying to get out of their life. You yeah. Know? Like it, it's kind of cool. It, like I'm not trying to be someone's counselor or teacher, but I, I feel you're getting good a, about being available for someone if they do need help. Absolutely, or, uh, dude. Advice for some shit like that. It's because, because like I want that same courtesy yeah. from other people. Like I want to be able to like hit people up and think like, you know, like oh, this is a you know, we're friends until we ain't. Like that's yeah. how it pretty much is with me. It's dude, I used to be ain't. a fucking negative person. <laughs> me too. And I was like, very like you know brotherhood like you know yes. like it's just the friends that Almost I'm friends culty. with. Yeah. yeah, it's culty type shit, but it's like when you're getting older, you're realizing that like people are incredible and it's like having the Fuck podcast, cult, dude, it's, <laughs> it's you talk about that a lot skater with Fuck your homies. And, and like, dude, that's kind of what it like. That's when I woke up, like I woke up literally one day and I'm just like, dude, why, why am I such it's like a, a burden. negative person? It's, a, it's just, a burden. Yeah, I, I guess it is, but yeah, I just like, it, it's another thing about getting in your thirties too, dude. You start thinking about that shit. Yeah. You like, start looking back you really from the, like you really start thinking about it. I agree with that for sure. You <laughs> yeah. definitely get into it a little bit more. I'm curious. Yeah. So like you guys started doing this and taking this over for, you know, like on your own kind of did, did the, anybody's that are, who are there, like the Mrs. Beans and everything, did they, were they already there in the beginning? So Mrs. Beans specifically is a new 
uh, anybody from season three, but all of our anybody or ninety nine percent of Steel anybody, Gray, yeah, was Steel Gray is also someone who was new in season three because uh, oh yeah, yeah, bleep season, but she's someone else who went back and and ripped all of season two and watched. Maybe she was around in the end of season two. I don't know, but it's like you guys have these like people that always like I've listened to probably four or five episodes now, and I hear that like you have these like you know these these uh anonymous people on there right. but it, but it's like you always talk about them and it's like people it gives people you know a, a, not i feel like 90 percent of podcasts you know they're all listening and they're flies on a wall listening in right. but with your podcast it's like you know you're part of it all you know like i love that yeah. you guys do like the questionnaire it, after every episode like never thought of that in my entire life but i think that that is like one of the most valuable things that i've ever seen you get a lot of good feedback that way dude. fuck yeah dude and, and i don't you, know and they say they, they, the they mention things that you don't even think about the, and and and, and it's you good topic of conversation too exactly like and it's played. like a net because yeah. it, you know the things that you might just touch on on the podcast someone might touch on it on the questionnaire and it's mm -hmm. like you're like yep. oh damn i didn't think that that was exactly. like you right. know that or like the beat or beat those cheeks topics like something so, like they'll give yeah. it like it's good to hear what's like on people's minds but it's also like skater and i talk about this all the time that like me personally i feel like i'm in this weird place where like i, I feel like the coach of the anybody's and like the podcast is like the platform where they can go out and like ball out you know what i mean like, yeah, I, I, like I don't slam ball right exactly i don't feel like like we're out there to like create content more than we are to like facilitate content and yeah. like i think we're really good at talking to people like these interview apps that w we started in season three which was like not a part of season one or two at all like that was like an awesome change that people were really receptive to that like is more of like our like creating content skill set if you wanted to call it that but yeah. it's like that's why the pod is <clears throat> not a competitive thing is a passion thing because technology podcasting the questionnaire on instagram whatever it may be allows us to talk to these people in erie or i mean i got the anchor we got allegedly people listening in south africa and like all over the place because <laughs> like, dude i tell you the little anchor like i don't know if that's how you post is anchor but it'll give you the breakdown of like oh, where no, in the I, world people are listening i thought you meant you had someone chiming in on questionnaires oh from i don't know like, maybe we could i know we i got know. random yeah. ass people like dude yeah, there's where, right where do you get people from uh, Spain, United Arab Emirates, yep. nice. uh, Australia. I've been having people in Russia, but then, cool. so I look at these and, uh, Iran had like, there was like 78 downloads in Iran Let's the other, go. and I'm just like, <laughs> really? who the fuck is listening wow, over there? Awesome, but then I, I asked my buddy about that and he was like, well, technically some of those could be like people using like, uh, like the different bots or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Different like, well, not even yeah. bots, but like, you know, uh, different IP address things, you know, like, uh, Oh, to view your, sh yeah. I like <coughs> scramble your location. Yeah, you or know what I mean? Bullshit. But it's yeah. like, bro, yeah. not all of them are, right. you know, and so, you know what, even if they are, <laughs> yeah. fuck off. <laughs> like, yeah. But it's like, yeah. Yeah. I look at that and I'm just like, holy shit, like this is cool. And I don't know, dude, like I just very, very open to pretty much everything, you know? Right. And I think that's why we had a good time. At least I hope you had a good time when you came yeah, on our show, time. dude, because look at you time. now, like you said, yeah. you're about to like write in, in the questionnaire and like, Oh, I can't wait to participate. It'd be like, I hope we never find out like who you write in as like we have like there's this one i might do a couple different minds you should my arch nemesis I'm sure we on get the show. some that are uh, a little different each time too my arch nemesis like my biggest hater on not hater because not a hater but like biggest chirper on the show is goes by gandalf and like will pop in <laughs> like once it like was heavy in season one will pop gandalf. in season two and three with just like basically like i'm still here neighbor like i'm listening to you and uh like i just can't wait like i hope it's someone that like comes up to me at some point in my life like i'm like at a wedding or like wherever it's like just you like, shall like, not exactly. pass exactly I just done some shit like that where I'm like no like like, like oh I would just like it I turns out it's actually mind. your dad yeah because like yeah <laughs> dude exactly exactly that would be hilarious if you had to do it the whole time under a month but like that's no. why I think that it's so cool that you guys do that because it offers the listener a way to participate and be part of the show you know if the listener chimes in and says hey I would you know pictures you an idea it's like you guys could make that happen and like right. bring them on and it's like yeah it's it's possibilities i'm kind of a little bit more like you know i'm I'm kind of a little bit more reserved on who i bring on here just because like i don't have notebooks you know what i mean i just want to i'm i'm really just like we talked about on your show it's like these are selfish choices right you know what i mean i want to talk to people that i'm interested in because it's easier for me like it was hard for me to talk to antoinette 
uh, the other week because, you know, I, I'm not someone who wears makeup. So yeah. I wanted to come correct to her and try to learn that angle. Right. Yeah. But it's like, it's easier for me to be able to be like, oh, you guys are podcasters. I like both of you. I like what you do. We could talk on here and like, just get to where we're going to go. Right. And I think that's like where we, where our shows are a little <laughs> different, where yours is more kind of this conversation. Yeah. Ours is more of like, that's why we call it like the show. You know, it does have kind of like that, like segment to chop it up and like keep it flipping and flopping. Like um, yeah, we do I love commercial that. breaks. It's we freedom. Do, yeah. 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 It is. And it's just, again, it's that organized chaos. And like, I'm someone in my, when it's the podcast or my personal life, like I need some semblance of a routine skating, yeah. unfortunately is a, is a victim of me <laughs> being like a, a routine guy. Like, cause he's no, I, I, like, I fucking keep a schedule now too. Right. And it's like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we're a perfect uh, match dude, because uh, we're like the perfect yin and yang of like, as you can see, like you said, the wave maker and the wave, like yeah. just like, like just, uh, yeah, I like it though. I, I could tell that you guys have a good vibe because it's like, you know, you, you obviously are good at talking. Like mm -hmm. you could talk, you're very, very like, uh, you, sp you speak in like, uh, I don't know what the terminology is, but you like say funny ass shit anecdotes and like you just come in with like leg sweeps and it's like, once you <laughs> say something, it's like, you know, it sticks there and like you poke in when you want to, like you really, uh, came out of your, or came out or came into your own with the whole, like, uh, John Claude Van Damme, you know, conversation and all that. Uh, yes. and I loved it's the number. It's his number one passion in his life. It's I, 80s I'm, action. I'm movies. looking at a t-shirt with you wearing it. <laughs> 80s action movies. Drawing. Dude, they're so good. They're so funny. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're just fun. I'm an eighties movie guy. That's why I watch. Yeah, if you could describe yeah. Skater in like three things, it'd be Gleaming 80s the Cube, eighties act action movies, <laughs> Coors, Coors Lights, and have uh, you ever seen Sick Gleaming Artists. the Cube? No, no. Again, you're talking to a <laughs> he's wall. He's never about seen all any these. action. Chris, fucking, any Christian Slater movie is riding a he's diamond plate. Terminator. So what? No, nah, bro. I mean, yeah. if this is going to be the Ash Neighbor Nate segment oh, of what movies so he hasn't seen, we're, we're going to be here for a long time. We're going to get, we're gonna get to the end of, we're, like, that. The, the movies will come in the end, but it's like, uh, it, it's just fun because, you know, I like the, I like the spontaneity of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I like not knowing what's going on, but I also like switching it up. You know what I mean? Even as someone, you know, like myself, I'm not going to listen to every person's interview on here. I don't expect people to listen to every person's interview that I do on here, but I could listen to your show through because who knows what the fuck is going to happen. I like hearing about movies. I like, I'm not even a sports guy, but I loved hearing about like the Tom Brady talk because it's like, you guys are like, you know, you guys are like, you know, you touch on things, but not, you know, it's not too inside baseball where you're like, oh, I, I'm, I don't know what the fuck is going right. on. It's like yeah. a group chat, right? It's like, a group chat. Exactly. That's perfect right. way then, to describe yeah, it. That was always our goal yeah. with like the show and like the Instagram stories. specifically. t-shirt. Yeah. Make a fucking t-shirt yeah. with text bubbles. Whoa. Anybody can do this show and just have funny ass people type and just think of funny ass shit and just. That's a good want, idea. Maybe that's our next that's shirt. the only that's kinds I have, dude. We, we those are the only kinds shirts. I have. We got to yeah. move our current shirts and then we'll drop those. As the so you guys, I mean, this is coming out on, you know, the same day that you're dropping your first episode. Damn right. So then hopefully our t-shirts are currently available on Instagram. If not, definitely on Monday. Depending on shipping with UPS. Oh, yeah, 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 shit, so, dude. Both um, our episodes come out the same fucking day. They do. Yeah. yeah no, How did you pick Thursdays? Where was that? Was that chosen before you came on? Uh, no, again, like I said, we used to drop on Monday and Wednesday. So we used to do Monday used to be exclusively questionnaire feedback episode. And yeah. then Wednesday was like the show. Yeah. And then, um, I just decided to do Thursdays before when we, why do you, switch. why? Um, I hate Friday and I hate Monday. Why do you hate them? Uh, because Friday, I don't think anybody consumes anything. Oh, on I was, Friday. Okay, I was, yeah, yeah, you well, hate it for dropping. Exactly. It. I was exactly. Like, Friday well, I mean, Monday. No, yeah, no. Again, that's a that's a whole <laughs> Tuesday's other, like, my favorite days, discussion. dude. Yeah, I'm a big Wednesday guy. Just like right in the middle. No, um, but like in terms of posting, like, yeah, no one's uh, people taking off work Fridays. People are right. taking off Mondays. Or I think Monday is a big drop day. Actually, like almost like inundated. You yeah, know people I mean? like, are getting back to work. They need to rip it. Or maybe that Monday. Could be, yeah. Most of all the podcasts I listen to drop Monday. That's exactly and, what I was gonna say. The only thing that sucks about it is that, you know, I unfortunately have most of my podcasts that I listen to that pick Monday to do it, you know? Yeah. So I try and space them out each day, but it would be cool to have like, you know, a podcast that drops Monday, another one that I watch. 
or listen to drops Tuesday. Yeah. The next one Wednesday. It's hard. Like that's what, that was a part of, you know, my mindset in the beginning is like, I listened to Burt Kreit. Like I listen to five podcasts. I listen to probably like 20% of Rogan. Now it's getting a little bit muddy. I'm way less than that. Yeah. It's sure. like, you know, if it's someone like George St. Pierre or like Bronson, I'll listen to that. I was listening to Maddie Matheson. I listened. I to just Bronson. listened to that one too. Maddie to Matheson. Today. I love him. What a wild, cat. What a wild animal. Mm-hmm. Um, you could tell he was like nervous in the beginning, just screaming and shit. Dude, it's crazy. He's like, uh, he's looking big. Like, oh, I love yeah. my boy, but his face is huge. Like, well, well that like, beard ain't doing him no, no favors. No, not at all. That's he looks like, like the like, cowardly lion. Shit, that's your dog. Yeah, <laughs> but it's yeah. like, I listen to Rogan. I listen to like Mark Marin. Mm-hmm. I listen to Burt Kreischer. And I listen to uh, uh, the Honeydew and I listen to the Crab Feast. So those are the five that I get to. It's so hard to like consume all the content you want to. Mm-hmm. Where do you guys get like, do you get like inspiration from podcasts that you listen to? Because that's what my episode, that's what my show is. Like I take, you know, such percent from Burt Kreischer, such percent from Mark Marin, such percent from like, you know, the Rogan. I take little aspects of each of their show and I mash them together into mine. Do you get inspiration from anyone like that? Um, <clears throat> I'll start it off. Probably because I'm going to talk less. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll open it up for you. Um, Th- throw the alley oop, no, I'll dunk Honestly, you. like I, I listen to, so I should start off by saying, um, one of the main reasons why I like doing this podcast is it, uh, it forces me to be, uh, truthful about myself. It forces yeah, you me can't to, lie on a podcast you because you can't fake the fucking funk and yeah. you can't fucking, can't be a bitch either. So, um, <laughs> <It's true. laughs> you it's gotta, true. you gotta be truth to, truthful to yourself. Yeah. Um, so having said that, um, most of the podcasts that I listen to, I wouldn't say that I get any like influence from them because they're like, they're like nerdy podcasts. Yeah. I listen to one that's like, um, Oh, I'm talking about here. like, I'm talking about like interview styles and the way that you conduct your show. Like, like, do you get inner, I mean, do you get like, uh, inspiration from podcasts you listen to in the way that you like construct yeah. your show? Well, my short answer would be no. Okay. <laughs> I, I would, I would actually agree with that because like, that's more of uh, like the interview episodes, like how we conduct ourselves in those. Yes. But like, again, that's like our show is very yeah. much driven by the people who want to interact with it more than us. You yeah. know what I mean? So like it's, a. Uh, Again, we, we call them executive producers all the time, but like it, just like talking about the vision with like uh, Fancy Bread and Feathers more so is like that inspiration or just- Is like his real of, last name Feathers? No, it's not. That's It's uh, McIntyre. Uh, like, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's like his, uh, that's what he publishes like his like poetry and stuff under. So um, Sorry for interrupting you. Say again. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I know. If anyone deserves it, it's me. Uh, like, but uh, no, again, it's like, do you take, uh, again, I think- everyone is an amalgamation of inspiration from yeah. different aspects of life, whether conscious For sure. or not. Like, but uh, I'll allow that. Yeah. I, I would agree that I don't know if I like consume things similar to, I mean, spitting chiclets on barstool. I love, yeah. which is uh, like uh, the two old paint, like uh, Ryan Whitney, Paul Bissonette, and then just like this random, like, basically uh J-R. massachusetts uh, r-a, R-A like, yeah, yeah. yeah he's just like jr yeah, 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 like yeah, 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 yeah. I just jr and sean kingston <laughs> like yeah, yeah yeah but uh he's like the massachusetts version of a yinzer so like they have like an awesome like bust ball aspect yeah. which i'm like very adamant about like on our show you know what i mean so yeah yeah gotta break some balls again it sounds a little uh it sounds a little like uh boasterous to say like no we don't have any inspiration but it's again it's like i don't think sh- so i mean our like, show's driven by yeah if you listen people. to your show it's like yeah I, I don't know of things like that you know what i mean like you can talk about wild shit and started like i didn't know what to expect in the beginning because the first one i listened to was one with steel gray and like you guys were like opening up talking about like listener write-ins and i'm just like what the fuck and it's like <laughs> you, you're talking about like uh you know you were talking about like this this uh motherly figure of the podcast and i was like oh this is it he's interviewing his mom immediately like you know i was like yeah that's fucking awesome i interviewed my mom right and then whenever we met you were like no that's not no I, anyone's mother that was the first time i met her was when she came in i love that like that like that like like you guys had your hooks in me from that second because it's just like i i feel like i'm a good judge of character and like listening to you guys talk i had no idea where yins were going with it but i loved every second of it because it was I don't know. Just, I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. I was trying to describe it to my buddy who listens to podcasts. He usually takes my recommendations and I told him, I don't know 
how to describe it. It's just a bunch of I mean, funny uh, shit. The, the simplest, most dumbest way to put it <clears throat> would just be like a group chat. Hey, we got yeah, yeah we got two segments. Uh, Three within this group chat, we interview people that do cool shit around Pittsburgh, um, and we have like you a, keep saying Pittsburgh, and you're dogging our the know, side I'm up crew. Dogging so many. We, other we did a whole actually. expose with like this movie that's coming out in yeah. Hollywood. Yeah. Like the whole but crew. It, it sprouted from Pittsburgh, though. Fact, shout out, Augie. Um, yeah, Augie. Anybody's are worldwide, son. Um, and then the other segment would just be like our, uh, like, do you listen to the Howard Stern show? Have you ever listened to the Howard Stern show? I never read Sirius. I'm a big fan of what he does, but I never read Sirius. Mm-hmm. All right, well, I won't go there then. Um, <laughs> well, fuck so, me. Yeah. yeah, no, the second segment Excuse would just me. be the, 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 you know, the intimate, uh, close um, listener stuff that we do yeah and then you got like funny shit like beating me beat or beat those cheeks where did that come from cheeks uh fancy brand any feathers dog okay. yeah so they had uh again the show their idea started as almost like uh i said the rundown but it's kind of like tosh point oh where yeah. they were gonna like make funny videos and talk about funny youtube videos yeah so like beat or beat those cheeks was just like their take on like would you rather like that's always wow. just like a good I like that. interactive segment so Simple. it's just like yeah i like that yeah, it was perfect for me so i like that uh i like the idea of you guys doing seasons and uh i like the idea that it gives you you know some time some downtime to prep mm-hmm. you know i feel like i do myself a disservice not doing that because i already set the bar at putting out an episode every week and it's a lot, it, mm-hmm. it, you know, it takes a lot of time. Oh yeah. So I'm trying to like backlog a little bit more, which I hate doing. Mm-hmm. So like, I'm, I'm kind of in this like internal fight with, do I want to backlog more and be able to like do some more production with it or just kind of keep it current. But I like that you guys do the seasons because it gives you some time to think about shit. You could kind of like, you know, step back and, and do like, it all. You're a perfect example. It allows the listener a chance to go back and catch up on old shit and like yeah. get, get hip to what we're up to. It's so. a, uh, it's definitely a good idea for sure. Now, what is your like plans? Like, are you going to like, like what is the plans for this upcoming season four? So, uh, again, uh, we always like to say season three was like a hilarious, like not hilarious, but was like a test. It was like a, a funny transition segment. A new yeah. formula. Exactly. And we yeah. really feel like we hit the ground running. So for season four, what we're going to do for the podcast, at least, is kind of like a flip-flop rhythm of like interview apps where we drop like the episode we did with you mixed yeah. in with anybody apps, which is like the dating game or advice with yoke or stuff like that. So um, just kind of that rhythm of every other for 20. And then we say it all the time, like it's a podcast, but our main thing that like we do with the show is like try and do meetups and events, which is obviously very hard during COVID and the pandemic. We did one last year that was a huge success, but we definitely got plans rolling to uh, do a couple more of those where we could just start getting uh everybody linked up and just start hanging out and doing some shit. I like that. I think that's another reason that, you know, I could feel no, like I feel no sort of like competition because it's like, I don't know, dude, like I gain things from you guys as I'm sure you gain things from me. It's like, it's, it's interesting to like hear the way that you think about, you know, your project and everything you do and how I think about mine. And like, that's another reason that I talk to everyone. Like I've, I've interviewed a bunch of people that have podcasts on here and it's like, I never once I'm thinking like, Oh, I hope that I hope these people don't get more listens than me. You know what I mean? Right. And again, I hope that that's not like what uh, I came across as is like my motivation. What I was trying to say is like people now will do a lot of stuff where like, uh, that is the motivation to just like no, I always it. win and like always be like, like that's the only way people can quantify W like can quantify W's exactly. And something that skaters and the show has taught me like, cause I was a person like that. I think that yeah. like was just like bad at quantifying success. And the only way you can, for me, it was like, a dub. like I always say like there's a Nas line like I like to win but I hate to lose like oh. you know what I mean like so, yeah yeah bars like yeah. yeah Nas bars on the show <laughs> um but yeah and what something I uh really appreciate about skater in the show is like appreciating smaller victories and appreciating the littler things and like it the, the show for me uh makes it much more easier for me to have an outlook on life that I appreciate more than what my previous outlook was Fuck yeah it's yeah. just like I'm happy if anyone listens to this. Exactly. And that's why, yeah. yeah, when it's insane to even think that people want to listen to me, talk to people exactly, and to have people that give you feedback. It's like, like I almost get like, you know, like this dude, uh, this dude, steel Valley leather, that right there, yes. he, he like made so, me, dude, he just hit me up and he was like, I made you this, my buddy, uh, Lysol, he, 
painted me them two pictures and that phone logo in the back. It's mm-hmm. like, dude, these people did this for me. And right. it's like, like I'm as, I'm as welled up whenever he gave me that right. because yeah. it's like, I'm just so appreciative that this is like what the podcast has become because it's like in the beginning, I always talk about how you like go through the mud of it all. It's like, you know, that period of time where no one was listening and you're just like hoping that you could mm-hmm. get a hundred downloads. And it's like later you see a thousand and you're like, God, like this is fucking incredible. Right. I can't believe it to see me sitting down with people that I've always dreamed of. It's like, you know, the, like that's so much more rewarding than everything. So it's like, do you guys have, you know, hopes and dreams of like trying to like, you know, incorporate guests into the show as far as like working in like almost like a game show kind of, you know what I mean? Not really just like focusing on an interview. Cause like we did like an interview episode, mm-hmm. you know, like it was basically, you know, you guys talking to me about like the way that I do things, but we got into other stuff, but it's like, I also want to be involved with, you know, the funny shit where we, you know, you be a, in the rap battle. I want to be in the rap <laughs> battle. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, swear yeah. to God. Well, dude, like we did, uh, I don't know if you, we did a dating game episode. I just yeah. got to it. I yeah. didn't get to listen so to it yet. That's but probably it's like, the, my favorite episode of last season. So um, yeah, that's so fun to me. It's just yeah. like, it feels so fun. And that's the whole motivation of our show is to like, if people just want to come up, like, I just want to meet people who are open to the idea of doing a dating game yeah. or like doing a like, 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 uh, yeah. one of skaters homie one. I'd never even like, I met the cat one time for and five those minutes. ideas, yeah. like the dating game idea and some of the other stuff that we did. Like those were ideas that we just thought off the rip too. Yeah. Like, those, those are anybody. Those, ideas. those are the best. Those ideas. were anybody ideas or they were our ideas that we just fucking randomly thought of right off the top of our head. And we just kind of went with it. Um, I would say this for this season, we're, we're trying to do that too, but just plan a little bit better for it. Yeah. A little bit more structure. Right. And that's why I feel so we know what we're doing in like three weeks instead of like, you know, less than a week. Our our shows are similar, Chad, but they're different because like, I I do feel like this isn't like gassing you up. People are tuning in most weeks to like, listen to you where like, I do think most people are tuning in every week to like, see what the anybody's are doing or like, or see what comes up like from suggestions from the anybody's, which is like, like, you know what I mean? Like I, I really yeah. do, like we're on the mic the most every week, but I do really feel like behind the scenes in terms of like letting JW Yoke do an advice segment or letting Miss Beans Fuck come yeah. on and talk about reverse deja vu. And like, like, <laughs> cause like, you know what I mean? Like I'm down to just like, and that I do think is a big uh, product of the pandemic because you're cut off from all these uh interactions with different areas of your life that like add to that fulfillment right like you got like your homies you play golf with and then you got your homies that you go do yoga with or work out or go to the bar go to the library or do whatever right and then pandemic comes and boom you can't do any of that shit anymore yeah unless it's like through technology (laughs) like through a questionnaire on instagram through this podcast that like somebody in ohio and erie or wherever is listening to and like Cause that's what a lot of people have said. Like the biggest compliment that we can get about the show is like uh shout out miss beans. Like she was like, uh, I, I worked on Christmas Eve and like, couldn't see my family. I listened to the Christmas special that you guys dropped and it like made me feel like I was with my friends and shit again. You know yeah, what I mean? Awesome. So like that's the, that group chat vibe is like, that's what it is. Cause group chats funny. It's busting your balls. It's serious. It's yeah. like, you know what I mean? It's, it's all that type of shit. So it feels cool to provide, like a uh, platform like a for that service. Or now, have you ever, you know? now, obviously Rob, you are, you know, very, very artistically talented and like you have offered, you know, things into the world of Pittsburgh. Like you have fuck yins and it's like, you know, that's something tangible that people could have. And like, you know, you're, you love skateboarding. Like you're offering something to something, you know, skateboarding is like almost a, a greater power. You're offering something to this greater power. I never had any sort of like creative way to do that. That's why I wanted to start a clothing line. That's why I wanted to do the podcast. It's like, I want to be involved and I want to be like giving something back to the city, but I want to do it in a way that I could do it. And it's not shitty. Like I can't draw a picture, so Mm -hmm. I'm not going to draw pictures and Mm -hmm. and post them up. But it's like, this is something that I've like kind of, I guess been like, you know, fortunate enough to be able to do is just like, I, I'm a chatty Kathy. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. I'm just like on here, just squawking like a goose. And not, skills on and the like mic. totally not in an obnoxious way either. Like you're mm-hmm. very, I try not to be quiet and somber and like, just, you know, it, it, you I got, appreciate you got that. it going on, man. Getting like, the somber and quiet like, stand somber and quiet. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I that's was like, like damn, that's like, like somber. Saying Martha Stewart likes your pie. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, no, it's easy listening, dude. Like, 
I appreciate that. You know, I it's, hope that it's it not is. easy listening as in it puts you asleep. I'm saying it's like fucking, it's not hard on the earlobes. It's not hard it's on easy the to consume. Yeah. It's, 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 it, yeah. It's and that, good, that's my goal of it all is to be able to, you know, kind of be a platform that's easily consumable for people that want to hear about, you know, being a fucking funeral director or something weird like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Um, do you guys now on the off season, are you guys like, trying to think of like new segments and like come in with like weird shit like that. Yeah. So I guess it's kind of, again, uh, a lot of our off season prep is kind of what we can do outside the podcast. So yeah. like trying to, again, we got a lot of pans in the fire right now, but just trying to kind of link <clears throat> to do it, like those events that we really want to do. We could, yeah. It's a lot helpful if we can link with some local businesses and stuff. So it's doing that as well as, Again, this is mine and Skater's first off season together, so it looked a lot different than like when me and Eli and uh, Andy Feathers were taking them off. So uh, yeah, we do uh, show prep. We canned a bunch of interviews. We kind of find our rhythm for what we want to do with the Anybody apps. We designed and kind of produced a T-shirt that we're going to drop in season four. We filmed a couple videos. Mm. Um, like yeah, just the other week we. Uh, Andy Feathers uh, got a tattoo. I saw that. Of, um, so, after, <laughs> Skater's like an unbelievable cartoonist as one of his many fucking talents in his tool bag. But uh, after every episode or 10 of the episodes, we did, uh, he would draw a cartoon based on the episode. It could have, it, it could just be one little sentence we talked about. It could have something to do with the whole thing. We, post, <laughs> we posted them all on Instagram. And then we let people, Andy Feathers was like, commented on one of them. He's like, I love this. Let's vote at the end of the season. Uh, and whichever one people vote for, I'll get tattooed on my body. Wow. Yeah. So like we posted a bunch of them, people voted, <clears throat> and then it evolved into Skater doing the tattoo on Andy. I and saw like, that. Yeah. So were you, are you like a, are you tattooed? Like, have you done tattoos before? Uh, loaded yeah, question. I, I, <laughs> No, no, no. I, I'm glad you asked this. Honestly, I, I'm not I've been fucking, waiting to tell my story. A fucking tattoo. Artist. I know you're not a tattoo artist. And so I, I never, really I, about this. I never ever want to be. I don't fuck like one of my homies hit me up the other day. He's like, "Yo, dude, become a tattoo artist, man. You make bank." And I was like, "Dude, I don't want to fucking tattoo people for 40 hours a week, dude. <laughs> I like, I, I, I like to do it." But not that much. So you've done it before though? I've done it, yeah, plenty of times. I got my own gun and set up and shit, and it's like basic shit, but like uh dude, oh, I'm just tattooing my homies. You yeah. Know? And and myself and that's it. Like, <laughs> and myself. Uh, so and like honestly, me. like I, Your cat. I you know, maybe at one <laughs> <laughs> the orange little Clementine on the fucking um, counter. Dude, yeah, that reminds me. I got to do the fucking banana. I've been wanting to do that for a while. <laughs> Did you the tattoo yourself? You said you were going to do that. to the wall that sold for like fucking trillions yep. or whatever. I just want to do like a goof on that and just like you tattoo should. fuckings on the banana with the duct tape. Anyway, um, uh, fuck, what were we saying? We were talking about tattoos. Oh, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't mind if like it eventually got to like a freelance level where like, you know, some people are coming through. It looked like a good tattoo. Okay. You know I can't what I mean? do technical be shit. Sick. I can yeah. just do easy. I can do whatever I can line draw, work. basically. Yeah. You know? It's line work, baby. Yeah, line work. You have basically. tattoos, Chad? Yeah. Yeah. I have, I have yeah. a few. I'm going to God clean, baby. You don't have no tattoos? Not oh, one. you're bare. Yeah. Yeah. Are you uh, Are you not a... No, it's funny, dude. I wanted one like forever growing up. And then I <clears> talked to someone. Like I was real close to just going to get one. I had no idea what I wanted. And someone told me, they were like, if you're going to get one, get your drawing and put it in a drawer for a year and then like pull it back out. And if you want it, and for whatever reason, that always stuck with me. Um, and I just never got another one. And now uh, uh, it's funny, dude. I feel like I'm in the minority. I've seen the transition go from like... I have a friend like that. He doesn't like, have any tattoos the rest of us do he's like i ain't getting one i'm not even like that i actually said like uh i think if i were to get a tattoo i'd get like our logo just like because for a whole bunch of reasons oh, i got dumb ass like, shit dude. Yeah, but that's I've, what i was gonna yeah, say as i like, got two gremlins shit, yeah. on my thigh i've a, a rat skateboarding on my right leg exactly yeah. it's just fun it's an 80s yourself. movie on my right oh. leg like a whole sleeve of it it's just i wouldn't like, know yeah <laughs> you ever see a monster squad uh no oh Wait. man 80s 80s it's it's one of the greatest it's the goonies but better Oh, Ooh, never shit. seen the Goonies. It's too. Oh good. my god, dude! What? what is wrong with you? You never seen the Goonies. It's what were you watching god. when you were younger? Um, I was outside. I think I don't know. 
Bro. Yeah, bullshit. You <laughs> no, Nickelodeon. So I die. Rugrats, right? Doug, uh, Rocket Power. Yeah, but like, like, all that type of shit. So, uh, like my movies, like Air Bud, Remember the Titans, <laughs> Mighty Ducks, like all that type of shit. <laughs> He's like, he's dead serious, like Air Buds. <laughs> <laughs> my man pulled out a snack pack <laughs> with that mean ass <laughs> clown. <laughs> Um, Mighty Duck, the, the coach peppering the kid with chest passes yeah. in the dark in the gym, <laughs> yeah. like, crying. crying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, dude, I don't know. Um, Godfather, shit like that. Like uh, Goodfellas. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, yeah, everybody, everybody, Godfather, <laughs> tough guy movie there, dude. <laughs> uh, but no, not eighties action flicks. Were you ever a skateboarder or anything? No, I got on it one time, fell off, cracked my elbow, never got back. On. <laughs> a couple longboards, like in college, cruising around, but like. That, no, nothing. Did uh, did you do beat or beat those cheeks for uh, Matt? Oh yeah, dude. Oh good. He went. Oh, we yeah. did all three of yours. Oh, did you? Out. Yeah, oh, actually, wow. uh, yeah. I'm excited today to on today's that. episode. If you go check it out. Oh, he's Matt's, the first one. Yep, he's the first one. The Matt right. Spartan. I'm yeah. pumped about that. Yeah, fuck yeah. Now, for you guys to, you know, like, I don't know. Do you ever have like any experiences where you're like, you're you're too critical on yourself with episodes where you're like, this is not good. And you're just like Nick, like every week. <laughs> <laughs> um, for the interview episodes, for sure. Never really with like an anybody episode. I'm um, like that way yeah. too. But uh, for the interview episodes, for sure. Just because uh, you're critical of yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Too much to a fault, for sure. I'm the same way. But yeah. it's like you know, in Everyone's time, we're own worst critic. Too. In time, well, if you're Not if everyone. you're good at what you do, I mean, or if you're working to be good at what you do, yes. that's when you're yes. your own critic. But it comes with time because I was the same way. Like, dude, I, you know, if I would hear like, you know, like something, it's like, I would have to cut out coughing and it's like, I ain't fucking doing that. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Right. It's just more stupid work. It's more work, but it's also like, I don't want it to be like that fucking shined up, like completely where it's almost like, you know, you can make something too shiny and that's like the living room that your friend has in their house growing up that their mother won't let you sit in or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, my buddy had a room that was just all white with like the plastic shit on the furniture. Right, it was a yeah. waste of fucking space. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? One huge family portrait. A waste. There. Yeah. And there's just a, uh, it's an all white room and yeah. it's like, what do you even have it for? Right. You know, that's, that's, valuable footage of your house exactly yeah. and you're just not doing it but like you know i want something that's well more you know more and consumable we, we were people. talking about this today actually more so in kind of the uh because we like to do uh like we make dumbass sketch videos and shit too or like we'll do like stupid meme instagram videos like we yeah. that's like where i like to kind of get in my bag and like we've had some hilarious one because like I mean, as Andy Feathers is like a legitimate like actor, like talent wise, like brain, just like if he wants to, like could go in and just like he's the most talented person I've like come. I mean, him and Fancy Bread one and two, but in terms of like that acting shit, it's just like he's on a whole nother level. But uh, when is it worth the energy you're putting in? Like not all work smart, not hard, right? You yeah. know what I mean? So like, is it make sense to put out five of the same Instagram videos every week just to have five videos on the page? You know what I mean? Like probably yeah. not. Like it's just, and that's the thing that I really appreciate about our show is like, we're willing to say like, that doesn't work. Let's fucking pivot and do something else. You know yeah, what I mean? You adapt. So, exactly. I like, that. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Now, uh, you know, like for someone who's like, uh, for, for, for both Ian's who like do this podcast, it's like, like me each week I get like a certain level of fulfillment, like trying to like, uh, like prepare myself. It's almost like, you know, I, I know that, you know, I can make this good. It's like, it, it, it's, it's motivation for me to like want to dive into different people and learn different things. It's like, you feel the same way. Like, do you tend to, to realize that this podcast is like opening you up into like, you know, definitely. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I guess I don't want to talk too much about the Matt Spar <clears throat> interview, but it was like selfishly my idea to bring him on yeah. and interview him because best. I literally like me myself wanted to like learn, learn about him and pick his brain and like see what's on his mind and Ain't see that the what best he thinks thing? about. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. It's a, it was liberating. Yeah. After I was done talking to him, I was like, uh, I don't even know if I told this to him or not, but I know what I was thinking it like, you don't understand like what that just did for me. Yeah. Like it, it's like, I, I got the juice, I feel, baby. I feel like a superhuman now, dude. Like it, it's just, sometimes you it's just, insane. It's a pandemic thing maybe, but like also no, it's not, I didn't. Yeah. And I would agree with you on that. I didn't like grow up with like, or I maybe not grow up, but I didn't have any kind of like fucking, 
like mentor or a person to look up to or, or like some sort of like role model or, yeah. you know what I mean? Like obviously I had good parents and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, but that's but like, different. It's mm-hmm. different. But yeah, dude, like, I, I don't know, man, that guy fucking kills it in like in everything. Just, yeah. He's a cool dude. Such I'm a trying to feed off that shit, man. And he's like older now and he like has seen it all and he knows like the perspective did you listen like, to the episode I did with him? Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, like a hundred fucking times. <laughs> it's like, and I felt bro, that's how I like, got hit to you actually is the, the Matt Spar episode. He sent me the Matt Spar episode. And that's like when I just like went back and did the same thing. I thought thing. it was so refreshing that like you could have the opportunity to speak to someone who was so deep into a world that is full of infamy. You yeah. know what I mean? You know, yeah. like it's like, tough to talk about that shit, dude. And 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 I've talked to graffiti artists who are like active in the city now. I didn't interview them on here, but I've talked to them about doing interviews, and like they won't do it. And mm-hmm. like I respect that. That's yeah. why I respect the graffiti yeah. like so much because like I understand that like these people are like pouring their lives out. You know, one yeah. throw up at a time. And, you know, they're not asking for anything. They don't want acknowledgement of it, but it's still like such an incredible piece of work. So to hear from someone's point of view that was so highly respected, who also like at one time was into that mentality, like, you know, this is a brotherhood, like we're secret, like, you know, it's like fucking anonymous, you know what I mean? And it's like, but, but like you said, he's older now. So it's like to hear that mental, like, like the way that his like mental shifted and like how we talked about, like, you know, how before, you know, graffiti artists are like, oh yeah, that's, it's kind of like sellout shit doing like, you know, the easy work or whatever mm-hmm. like that. And, you know, just like the way that he thinks about thing, it's like to have a podcast, you have this opportunity to, to use it to your advantage because it's like, yeah, you could hit up Matt Spar on Instagram and be like, yo dude, like, do you just want to like get together and kind of chop it up? But like, that's, that's kind of like not as easily approachable. I know what you're saying. Got more of a stigma. Like he'd be less inclined to say yes to that invitation. Yeah. It's just like, I think he would, he would be down for, he would be down. I'm not talking about him. Because we were doing this thing. It was just like, it's easier to have that opportunity to be like, Oh, let's, let's kind of, let me like grill you about your life for a couple hours. And people, it kind of sets people up for success. It kind of sets you up for success because people are like, Oh, I know I'm going to be talking to myself and everything. And Matt was just a perfect example of like, I was the first to admit, like I respect, graffiti from afar i'm not nearly as in hip with it as you two guys are obviously as mad as but like just the way matt looks at life dude and that's part of like him being older like the way he portrayed that to us like yeah. on the episode we dropped today is like that was i don't know skater i know got a lot out of it professionally or, or creatively dude. if you want to call it, but like, i just got a, a, so much out of it like life-wise dude because that dude is just yeah i'd say i got more i appreciate the way he looks at life and just how he approaches it because uh again he's a perfect example of don't judge a book by its cover right Absolutely. like you see this cat he rolls up he's just like ripping noops like just like in his <laughs> pain overalls well, he, dude and he's got this yin's accent and then he's out here dropping to the core like, you're out here talking about jordan pearson whoever like this dude's dropping the same amount of game if not more than these motherfuckers on instagram who are blowing up and shit jordan yeah. pearson bad example because he's a legend <laughs> right now but back um, back to what you're saying about Matt coming up in a world of infamy and not knowing like, or not wanting people to know like who they are and shit. Like it, it, it's very similar, similar to the skate world Yeah, is in like, it's not that maybe some of these guys don't want to be known, even though that's true too. But I think a lot of these skateboarders just don't, they don't want their name out there like that. So I remember when I was first starting the show with neighbor um, we were just brainstorming on like who we could get on the show, you know? And, uh, he was, you know, saying like, Oh, we could totally get some of your boys on who skate. And I'm just like, dude, they don't want to love, I'd it. love to do it. I'd love to fucking do it, but I just know they're not going to be down because they're just the same type of people, dude. Like, yeah. It, it, yeah, sure. Do they want credit for shit they do? Yeah, who doesn't? But yeah, but like, they want to do it. They don't want to be on blast yeah. and, and like talk. So like- They're earning respect they are, by doing what they're doing rather than just talking yeah. about it. They're being about it. They're not just talking about it. But to neighbor's defense over here, I don't mean to fucking talk shit on them all night. That's <laughs> <laughs> all right. Table's turned for um, once. I, am, I, I do want to try and get some of them, like my friends that are doing cool shit right now yeah. and, and get them on to talk to them. But- uh I Matt's find it hard is good it's, not, it's not only easy. for our interview but for, selfishly for our show for Skater because that was like I said Skater's first real interview he went out he got he ran he like did himself so now I think like 
part of skater's reservation is exactly justified about his homeboys not wanting to chat about it but some of it's also not being comfortable enough to ask just like we're talking about sure. like yeah. you know what i mean yeah. like the two people he's asked so far have won the dating game and opened up season four of like our, our who won our, the dating game his boy cody cody jones shout out cody cody and jones Miss Bonima, like one of the cody legendary jones. Yeah. yeah now i mean like it's interesting because it's like you know we we have these opportunities to like talk to people but it's like I, I don't know. It's so, it's such like a weird aspect because, you know, people are just more open to like kind of doing this type of stuff now because I don't know. It's just like, there's a reason rather than just being like, Oh, let's sit in the fucking bar and talk about like mm-hmm. what your life is like. Cause it's kind of like a weird way. You know, I can't talk to fucking Selena Pompiani in a bar without looking like a fucking creeper. Probably. <laughs> so like, I'm in so what wedding. are you doing? I'm are you? Bars yeah, yeah. Wow. Her, her fiance is like one of my best homeboys. Shout out Mac and Selena. Really? Yeah. 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 Wow. So no big funny. deal or not. <laughs> I mean, You're definitely not. Max and it's doing the makeup for a couple yeah. of them. Hey, <laughs> let's go. Yeah, Maybe I'll see you there. there. Love it. Nice. I know what you're saying, Chad, but uh, there's a lot of fucking bars out there where you can go to and meet real <laughs> ass fucking yinzers who I like get that. painted all the bridge. You're laughing, dude, but I'm being that's just not that's not his serious. scene. The bar scene's not his scene. No, but oh, I'm, I get that. It do, yeah. I'm not even I'm saying not that saying, the bar scene. I'm just saying like no, but I know just because you, yeah. you go to the bar like doesn't mean you're not going to meet anyone. Like it's yeah. taking away those excuses Unspecial. of why people say they wouldn't come on or it's just, no, 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 no. I'm talking about going to a bar like you don't really just have the opportunity. It's not as easy of an opportunity to steal someone away and selfishly grill them for oh, a yeah, couple yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if you saw well, see, Matt Spar in a bar and you didn't really know him and you went up to him and we're like, yo, dude, like, didn't you used to like paint graffiti? Like, do you yeah. like, you do you skate and everything? He'd probably be like, uh, I don't know. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? But it's, it's just like you have an opera, you've created an environment, an incubator to, you know, sprout these like incredible conversations with people that like are not like these like, like, like these like prolific figures, like a Jordan Peterson or something like that. It's mm-hmm. like, like we were talking about before, those people were so fucking like, out of my like life, they're on a shelf. You know what I mean? It's like a fucking decorative plate. You know what I mean? Right. I want to talk to someone. I want to talk to someone that's a painted Turner's carton. You know yeah, what I mean? Facts. Like Fuck, Matt Spar. Yeah, yeah. Like he's Fuck, a fucking yeah. painted Turner's carton. Like I could see that. I could hold that. I I'm approachable to be able to ask that. I love that though. <clears throat> it's Sick. a good thing about the podcast. I appreciate that. Like again, it's like I appreciate that feeling of it being tangible you know what i mean because that's like what it is it's like that's the group chat vibe that's all that shit where it's just like especially now in the pandemic and the lockdown more so when shit was more strict it you weren't getting any of that shit you know what i mean like so if if we could be a little bit uh uh helping get back to that i don't even want to call it normal because life is never going to be back to what it was yeah like it's it's helped to be that tangible interaction. Nah, dude, we're we're gonna go down to Ruggers Field this summer and <laughs> we did that in the pandemic. Knock anyway. out of the <laughs> yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. goddamn. We did it when team. it was way stricter. You want to do a home run derby? We did one last they summer. Did one before. Oh, dude, like, I missed out, and I'm I'm <sighs> gonna be here. For last summer, summer. we had like 35 people. Shout out! I'll pitch for you. Yeah, I'll pitch bro, for you. Let's, let's go. go. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. But I'll take a couple swings. Yeah, you know. We got a video on uh, Instagram and YouTube. Go check it out. Were you baseball players? Uh, I grew up playing baseball. I fucking love baseball. Dude. Really? Yeah. You love watching baseball? Yeah, to to uh, an extent. But uh, baseball pl- playing baseball is like a different feel than watching any other sport. It's like, yeah, you there's know what a I mean? lot of like science and Being strategy young. involved and shit. Too. Yeah. I mean, I played till little league till ninth. That's why they always say like, deal. like no, till ba- ninth grade, it's definitely not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, it's the least big deal. Yeah. But like in baseball, never, they always but. like fucking have that term. What's like, don't think too much. Just have fun or something like that. Because baseball, it like you <laughs> can exclusively think exclusively a baseball it. term. I don't know something from Sandlot. It's like you're thinking too much. You've never seen get out Sandlot. of your head. Don't even I don't tell me that you've line. never seen Sandlot multiple dude. times. Benny was talking to Smalls. Right. Yeah, he uh, was like, puts your glove up. Goes and all the way out the in the outfield. Yeah. Has the pep talk he with goes, him. You and think too much. Yeah, you're getting you think too much to steal a line you from fun. Billy Hoyle when he was out here because I, I I fucking love Billy when he was on here with BD. I'm gonna say to Rob when we drive home. I don't like how you conducted yourself there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, you guys should hit him up and have him on. It's it. We're we'd hope we're hoping to. So. 
if is, we can uh, manifest it here, we'd love to. He is one of the greatest people. Yeah. Like one of, uh, you know, he's always been so supportive, but it's just like, it's so cool, you know, coming back again to like how this is not a competition. It's like, you know, I will do anything to like, you know, make meetings happen. You know what I mean? I just want, I want a community of it. You know, like you often hear people on like com- like comic podcasts like Burt Kreischer and all them they talk about classes that they come up with mm-hmm. and like yeah. the people that were around whenever Facts. they were doing it right. and it's like I want that yeah. you know what I mean like I don't necessarily feel like I've felt that at all uh, you know with these last three years like I wouldn't really consider any other people that do podcasts like part of a class that I would necessarily want to be in and mm-hmm. that's not like a slight to anyone right. but it's yeah. like I'm not doing like I don't I'm not in a class with people that are drinking beers and you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I'm not in the music scene. You know what I mean? I'm in the everything scene. Like I'm kind of, you're in the anybody scene, anybody scene. <laughs> yeah. Let's get it. Yeah, Look at that. I'm I in the anybody. Say, scene. I, hope, I hope maybe you feel now that there's maybe one group of people that you're rocking. Yeah. With you know what bit. I mean? Yeah. And that's it. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I, I feel like I felt more, you know, uh, welcome. And like, I just felt like we were in like a fucking club and it goes back it, again. It's uh inclusive exclusivity if that even makes sense yeah. you know what i mean because like everybody wants to be included to feel a part of something especially now like again you, we're gonna go deep a little bit here but like a big difference a big difference between our generation and the generation above us we talk about this maybe on the show maybe not is how you identify yourself and like what your identity means now like the generation above us your identity was your job your family your ethnic background your religion that was basically it right like you're a guy who doesn't define himself by his job like i'm certainly not a guy who defines himself by his job so that's all the it's like this sometimes to a fault this uh access and this time spent on like what do i identify myself as yeah. and that can be a whole bunch of different things for sure but, like if our identity can be like that search for fulfillment which is so broad but like a core belief that like everybody can rally around where it's like yeah dude yeah we're not going to tell you everything's good like if it sucks we're going to tell like, my core we, belief is good vibes exactly right and yeah. just like, i got energy and just i got a lot of why energy. not why not is like our vibe like yeah why not, why not? Like, yeah. why not why not like that's yes. why like you know and, and those those situations take you to the the best places it's like say yes. fuck it why not and you're yeah. a perfect example it, it it in my opinion helps you live your best life again it's like the hero's journey or like we talked about this with matt spar on today's interview i love how this is like playing hand in hand is like uh uh like a lot of people like you're tr- what you're meant to be doing in the world like matt spar is meant to be creating like yeah and he's running step in step with that that's like following the voice of like god or the higher being or like whatever you want to call it right like so when you're totally living in that like step of fulfillment which for a lot of people happens very rarely or if you are lucky and you get to the point where you're able to kind of yeah. run in it more regularly but you always know that like if you're listening to that inner voice like like you said in the shower this morning right when you were working out yeah you ignore yeah. that voice 90 percent of your life right but when you listen to it that 10 percent, you always know that this is how i feel best it might not be i think how my ideal day is going to go but just listening to that voice i at least me personally with the podcast journey and all this other stuff is really saying like listening to that inner voice is always for the best i find it to be motivating too because it's like we talk to these people like matt who like you know all these people at one point didn't think that they were going to be able to do what they're doing. Yes. You know what I mean? In the, like the people that I, whether it be you, Selena Pompiani, anyone, you know, the people that I sit across in these chairs, like that's why it's called, I'll call you right back. It's like at one point in life, you know, everyone who I'm talking to has had to, you know, someone called them and they're just like, yo, I'm busy. I'll just have to call you right back. Mm-hmm. You know? And that's like such like a through line through everything. It's like, at one point you did not like, this was your dream. Maybe, you know, maybe it was your dream or maybe it's just something that you, you know, adapted to and, 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 and thrive in now. But it's like, I, I, it's motivating to hear that. Like, you know, at that moment that people come up to that edge, they don't just like kind of, you know, back off. They just say, fuck it and jump. Right. Just yeah. kick the mic. Like an <laughs> You're getting so animated. I'm getting animated. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Because I mean, I, this whole time I've been listening, there's just this rap line playing in my head from one, uh, J Cole. He's got the dreamville people. I think cause said, I'll call you back. I'm doing something important. Like, you know uh, what I mean? Like, never heard yeah. that. Yeah. I'll send you the song. It's, wow. it's fun. He's got a way better cadence on it than I do. I was, I was too nervous. <laughs> I to call you back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to call you back. I'm doing something important. 
I, uh, I, I do enjoy the, you know, I enjoy the, the freedom and I enjoy the fun aspect of it all. You know, like I'm, a, I'm a guy that I just like to have fun. I want to laugh with people, but you know, in that laughter, I want some profound shit to come out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's like what I hope to have on here. It's like even the, you know, Matt Thornton, who is a recovering addict, you know, like that was like one of the most like powerful episodes that I did, but we're still laughing through it at some point. And it's like, mm-hmm. I don't know, dude, I get so much like fulfillment out of like, you know, like you were talking about not necessarily being like a therapist, but I just want to be able to be someone who's present in time because people, you know, we live in this generation. We're talking about different generations. It's like people would rather have a text than a phone call. And I'm the exact opposite. Right. Dude, It for me, <clears throat> it sounds kind of soft, but sometimes you really do just want to be there like for people. Oh, yeah. Bro. Like, and, and not why is that in, soft? Not soft I mean, I wear pink. I, I cry all the time. I don't think it's soft, but you know, <laughs> I got a lot of do. friends that will just make fun of me for saying yeah. that right off the riff. And I know they don't even mean it, but it, there is some kind of like fulfillment and enjoyment out of like, uh, not just teaching someone, but if you're teaching just something that's even better, but if you're just there talking, to bounce you know, ideas off of and like having someone, a genuine conversation, yeah. I think I enjoy it and respect it because I've been the person that's venting to someone else. And like, yeah. I, I, I appreciated their time that they gave me. So hundred percent. That's, that's what I really get out of this podcast sometimes is, you know, I'm not saving lives over here or saving the world, <laughs> sure but like, ain't. dude, you never know. Like, I mean, sometimes little ass things can change your whole life. No, it's like Absolutely. what we said about Ms. Beans. The fact that like, if you can, help somebody's day be better. Why, why wouldn't you yeah. want to do yeah, that? Yeah, why wouldn't you yeah. want to do that? Yeah. Dude, is that the girl that works at Aldi's? No, that's uh, the girl from Bleep and Nima who, that's OG. But Miss Beans is uh, out of Ohio. Uh, uh, got us linked through a poetry class that she took with Andy Feathers back oh, in West Virginia. Wow. Yeah, and so she zoomed in for a couple of episodes. I'm trying to have a poetry great. competition with Andy Feathers. Uh, dude, I, yeah. I love you to death, yeah. man, but I don't know. He's Bro, I used to write mad poems. Yeah, I, I would mean, love I'm, to get I love you to death, it, Chad, but my, yeah. man, my man's sick with Let's do it. Like, I want to yeah, do it. Let's do it. I, I have yeah. so many ideas. Like I, I think that you guys will be very surprised on how active i am with the anybody's oh bro i i can't sick. wait to Fucking be sick. You know, knock my socks off <laughs> yeah, you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. i can't we wait to it. be in like, there. and i feel like that uh i feel like the people that uh you guys surround yourself with would be uh you know like-minded you know like you know the same type of people that i want to be around that's what, you know what i can't what I mean? stress yeah. enough dude is like the show is not us it's like everybody who fucks with us yeah and it, again it's yeah. something that it's an amazing seed idea that came from these two wild, amazing, terrifyingly wacky brains of Andy Feathers and Fancy Bread who like have blessed us with the opportunity to carry the torch and like help other people like see the same things that they showed us. Like that's yeah. what it really is. You know what I mean? Like those two dudes are on another level of just like life and like seeing what actually matters and like I can't wait to get him on here, oh, Fancy bro, he's Bread. Gonna, he's gonna he's just yeah, he's uh I might make him uncomfortable yep. by the questions that I ask him. I don't I'm know if he deep. can, dude. He's in. He, that's <laughs> what deep. his whole life. And again, he, I know he wants to come on closer to when he drops heavy lifting, which he's talked about on our show very quickly about. So I'm not going to do it a disservice by trying to touch on it, but that's like his newest project that he's going to drop. And yeah. If you if he comes on after he drops that or you get to see a portion of it, then if you, you need think to, your cr- questions you, are wild now, you need be to, uh, I need to tell him to listen to the, to last week's or actually it didn't even come out yet. I forgot. Oh, okay. I, uh, I, I interviewed, <laughs> See your backlogging, dog. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, That's what I mean. Go. I hate that, bro. Really? Okay. Like, I, yeah, I'm it, telling you, dude. Like, like we're, it, we're just starting to backlog. Skater dude. knows I hate and the time off, but it's it's for yeah, the best. It's hard for me because it's like you know, I it loses its patina almost, or but, but yeah, patina is actually comes years. in time, but it loses its like shine for me. But it's uh, this isn't losing its shine. Interviewed. Uh, I, I interviewed this guy, Will Fast Willie. He fucking just biked 303 miles in 32 hours in no a 32,000 foot elevation change. There's like a uh, 101 mile loop in State College. This dude, for the, f- the first time he did State. it, he was like, fuck it, I'll do it twice. Freak. What a nut. Dude. And then after he did it twice, he was like, oh, I got it for three times. Went out there and did it in 32 hours, slept for 10 minutes, almost oh. fell asleep going down a hill. <laughs> Hey, bro, 
episode dropping next week. Holler at your boy. Oh my god, it's see, wild, awesome. And then the yeah, motherfucker. No. So it's I prepared miss. for it, and I was like, I'm going to talk to this dude about biking. First thing he told me, I live on a goat farm in North Hills. <laughs> we sell our goat cheese to fucking Whole Foods. It's called Goat Rodeo, and I was like, Wait, we can't talk about this record, because record. I'm going to just go into that. Yeah. So Damn. I don't know, but Damn. that's the best part about it is you have that's a podcast, so you can do whatever the fuck you want with it. Talk to whoever you want, yeah. however you want. But it also, do it. you think yeah. about it, it's like. Of course, the dude that's built to do that bike race also has a cheese company that's like being slanged in Whole Foods. You Fuck know what yeah. I mean? Because like that's just like like that's like Fancy Bread and Andy Feathers and like like those dudes are just cut like from a different cloth, dude. I know. Like that Fancy Brothers running a marathon on a Sunday on a whim. Cause he was just like, oh, fancy brothers. Let me tell you, one person who didn't run a marathon was Andy Feathers. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but no, like that. That's just like, and again, uh, I think you can. A lot of people are born like that, but like if you're just like if you're into working out, if you're into training your mind, you can get to that point too. Fuck where yeah. you just look at the world different. It's like Alice in Wonderland when she goes from black and white to the to the color. That's how I feel just about having the show. Isn't that Wizard in my of life. Oz? Yeah, that's Wizard of Oz. Same shit. <laughs> yeah. If you don't you don't know much about me, Chad, I mix and match everything. I've never yeah, seen yeah. any cool movies out there. <laughs> Um, I'm not mad that I didn't uh, get the Alice in Wonderland right. Wizard of Oz. Okay. Listen, we're getting to the ending I'm segment sorry. of the podcast because yep. I'm excited. I feel like this is going to be like a fucking Hell in the Cell match. <laughs> uh, so I love Hell in the Cell. I know. Who can't love it? Yeah, you know what great. I mean? Shout Keep, out to uh, fucking Undertaker and Mankind. Some, yeah, the King of the Ring uh, in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Down in Civic Arena. God fucking, you know, a bunch Legendary, of animals. Dude. Um, ending segment. So the ending segment that I do with each guest is an ending segment called Desert Island Questions. Desert Island Questions is whenever I give each guest three categories to take with them on a desert island to exhaust until they starve to death and die a painful death. Um, Why got to be painful? I mean, if you're starving, it's not going to be. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, Max. like yeah, uh, Max. Alexander Supertramp on a, on into the wild was struggling at the end when he was starving. <laughs> um, but okay. So the first segment or the first category is three things to watch. So you each get to pick three things to watch. Can't wait to hear what you guys pick. <laughs> so this is the, this is the idea of what it is. You're on a desert Island. You get one TV with an integral DVD player in it and you get three DVDs. That's it for the rest of your entire life. It can't be a box set. It's individual DVDs. I'll allow a box set. Okay. All right. I'll I'm allow not saying I'm going to have, I've been rattled by this because That's I feel fine. like this is, this is the defining segment. This like, is defining. This you, is make This is where everyone, because we learn about everyone's life kind of, but like this is where really people start to judge you and say, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> you got dog shit taste, yeah. cuz. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. The real shit comes Jeez, out. So taste. I'm going to give you guys options. You guys could either answer horseshoe style or you could just... Take it, and then, Rob, you could take it. What do you want to do? If we're going all three, you're going first. If we're going, <laughs> I'd prefer horseshoe. Uh, Cornhole style, back and forth. Horseshoe meaning, like, I'll say all mine. Then no, 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 no. <laughs> you say opposite. one. The opposite. Yeah, Nick will say one. Style. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, what was the question again? <laughs> oh, my God. Favorite, favorite things to watch. That's yes. another one. Okay. Um, Seinfeld. One, two, uh, the Die Hard trilogy. You said we were allowed box sets. So yeah. That's one, two, and we three. We also said we Just were allow. Gonna, Just yeah. let them go. I don't care. All right, whatever. Fucking. Um, <laughs> Love you. Three. Die Hard's your favorite? This is the first year I ever watched Die Hard in my entire life. Oh, dude, and you're on me you about these 80s action movies? You haven't seen the 80s me, action dude. movie? Uh, I mean, I've seen probably 98% of the good ones. <laughs> and people were like Here's your- shunning me because i never seen Die Hard. Oh, your new favorite Christmas movie should be Die Hard. No, I do not think that it's a Christmas movie whatsoever. Oh, we'll talk about it. We can talk bit about of it. Friction. Over here. <laughs> He's had a little bit of friction. Why? <laughs> no, because cool. there was one one uh, corporate Christmas tree in the fucking side. You Christmas know what I mean? Party. Yeah. I think, it's, I think it's a tire. I don't argument. feel that. Oh, which yeah. one? You, were we talking about Die Hard one? Or I've never Hard seen two? the rest of them. Oh, I only see number one because you don't know what your third in, your third option is. Uh, the Wire. Okay. Ooh, I have not watched choice. it yet. I know that I need to watch it. I know it's incredible. Yeah. Don't spoil it. I'm not going to spoil it. Okay. 
15 years later. The only thing I'll spoil, <laughs> yeah. The only thing I'll spoil is you should. It's really, really fucking good. You should watch it. Now, to be but fair, here, here's another thing I'll spoil. To be fair, it's very complicated. It's uh, kind of slow and dated as well. I hear outdated. Yeah, but it's almost so outdated now that it's back. That it's like. It's Boys are wearing back, baggy you know jeans know I mean? again. Yeah, and selling well, crack. Yeah, nobody, <laughs> I mean, well, like, dude, first season, people have pagers. You know, nobody know. even has a cell phone. Did you did, wait? Do you watch Snowfall? Nah, I'm not caught up I on the most recent though, season, I but I watched the first two. <sighs> it's it's one of the best. I like it more than Breaking Bad. I've been trying to push it on everyone here. It's a really good one. I feel like a lot of people watch it. Have you? Is it one of those shows though that gives you like so much anxiety? You don't. Breaking Bad. You can't even imagine. The only other you you literally cannot imagine. (laughs) You cannot imagine the most anxiety. Breaking Bad. You get a lot of anxiety for sure. Yes, it is on that level. The only it's on the same. Watch it then. Oh yeah, don't watch it if you get anxiety. I give Skater enough anxiety. uh, (laughs) uh, What's the money laundering show? uh, uh, Ozark. Ozark. Yeah, oh it's God. on that level. That I could not. Couple left handed cigarettes. I was watching the finale. How you doing? And I, I was yeah. like, I have to turn this off <laughs> because I had so much anxiety that. Yeah, I, it was it was almost too much, dude. Bro, I remember that. I can't it's, handle it. It's dude. too good. There was some show on Netflix called The Carbon Effect or some shit. It came out last year, a couple years ago, maybe. Yeah, I don't remember. Like, uh, and I watched it a little uh, after a little bit of a goofy night one time, and watched ten seconds of it, and had to turn it off, and like put on some dumbass like sitcom. I was like, I am not. I know. Ready I like. For this. I like a light. Like, yeah. You know, last yesterday, me me and Antoinette woke up. We watched I Love You, Man. She oh, never seen dude, it. See, oh, now you're getting into the more say, similar yeah. vein of what what my I love picks that. would probably be. No. Yeah. What about you? Did you go to the third? The yeah. wire? Was the wire? So okay. the wire. All right. The first one, I, I alluded to it before, but again, a lot of memories around this movie. Shout out. Big, gotta go Godfather too. Like- I never seen it. Re- <laughs> oh, <laughs> never seen man, the Godfather. Chad. I've seen every other- So I what's see considered other- arguably the greatest movie of all time. Literally. Like it, it, you haven't seen it and you're on me about uh, Monster Mash or whatever the <laughs> fuck you were talking about. <laughs> yeah. Touche. Yeah, 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 Touche. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um- <laughs> I think you should, dude, I like, that's why I love it. Cause like I saw it first time ever in like the theater, they were playing in like the Benedum. My old man took me and my, uh, see, that's great. Thing. Yeah. So but yeah, it's a great flick. It's weird because, you know, I grew up on, uh, I grew up on cinema for sure. Not just like I've been, I was watching like, you know, Desperado and right. like movies like that. Right. I was never someone who delved into the mafia movies until later. You know, the first mafia movie I think I ever watched was a Bronx tale. Great one. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely a great one. Ever. But then, you know, probably until I, I probably didn't watch Casino or Goodfellas until I was like 21. Oh, that is late. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Late yeah. as fuck. I remember seeing my, my See, grandmother. Like, that's had, I'm watching with my cousins when I'm a time, kid and right shit. Uh, is all that shit. Like, See, we're watching like horror movies. Like I'm watching all horror movies. That ain't me. You dog. know what I mean? Fucked up. No, Halloween, everything. I had to, my mom picked me up in ninth grade from a date because a chick made me watch Saw. <laughs> and I was freaked out. I was like, I gotta go. I'm having a family emergency. I'm like, calm. Bro, I swear to God. My f- <laughs> <laughs> My first cell phone was this cell phone. I was in ninth grade and it ran on f- four AA batteries. It held 16 contact. Like, I swear to God, this was my phone. Exactly like the Zach Morris and everything. Jeez. Wow. And so I like stepped outside on the porch and like, Called my mom. I was like, we got to handle this. Like, come, come get your boy. He's not ready. That for this. is yeah. hilarious. Very funny. Um, yeah. Okay. So Godfather 2. Um, I'm also going to pick, I got to do another, the breakup. Vince Vaughn. Oh, one of my favorite yeah, movies. Good. Very rewatchable. One. Like one of my favorites. It's it's one. I, I don't know if Antoinette's ever seen that. I might oh, have to make her watch dude, it. And that everybody loves that movie. Jennifer right? Aniston. Yeah. Oh, just rock star when that key stirs out. Like, unreal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just unreal. Sorry, Mrs. Neighbor. You know, I get a pass with Jennifer you, Aniston. You gotta call it. You yeah. gotta call it as yeah. it is. If they she see Ryan Reynolds, passes. Yeah. you know, if you see <laughs> Ryan Reynolds six pack, I'm gonna uh, be looking at it oh, too. Dude, my girl's more like Tom Petty, rest in peace. But like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Which is even like it makes me feel Tom worse. Petty. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Oh, Tom Petty from Wedding Crashers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I, mm, I'm torn. I want to do another movie, but I feel like I got to do a show. Go ahead. Um, Friday Night Lights compilation front oh, to back. I watched it all. It was incredible. It's incredible. It's dude. an incredible it's, movie. It's, it, you no the show. I mean the oh, TV yeah, show. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's incredible. Again, both. say what you want. Like you know what you're signing up for. A little bit of like, I love Taylor like Kinney the, uh, bro. or Taylor Kish. Kish. What? Oh, uh, Which one's Taylor Kinney? 
I just don't oh, know. know Letter Kenny. You ever see that show? Yeah, Letter yeah, Kenny. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember uh, that show. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's still on, I think. But right. uh, yeah, so those are those are the three. Those are good. Yeah. Those are three good choices. And those yeah. are, that's a it's a wide variety. You know, you you have a lot of shit to watch with Seinfeld and The Wire, and then the Diehards. How many are there now? Like six, seventy two. I think. Uh, yeah, I was only meaning the first three. Okay, that's <laughs> fair. And uh, you got a good you got a good selection too. Godfather two. Uh, why can't I think of it? The breakup, breakup, and, and then Friday Night yeah. Lights. What do you think is the most picked like movie or show in that in this question mm. overall, if, or just one Seinfeld that for sure? No, no, it's probably either The Office or I knew that was going to be it. Uh, it's probably either The Office or I mean, honestly, it's probably The Office. Yeah, the Office are like Breaking dude, Bad. Dude, it's like yeah, people have probably. picked The Office. I'm not people a big pick Office Breaking guy, Bad. But really? Again, respect it. Like, I, it's like Tom Brady. Again, very similar to my Tom Brady argument. Respect it. But like, if you were like, I, I do prefer Parks and Rec. Like in that style of show, I just oh. I love Swanson. I love. Oh my like, god, yeah, it kills just, me. I don't know, dude. I watch it and I just like. I. It's one of those things that I like want to like and don't understand why I don't. Maybe because it's just like before I got into it, like That's all the big jokes were played. I out thought and Parks shit. and Rec was just like a generic generic ass version of which it. totally makes yeah. sense but, but i get right. it i get yeah. it i right. feel people who watch parks and rec before the office like fully are gonna enjoy that more because they're so similar to each other uh have you saw what we do in the shadows Mm-mm. i never seen that dude it's it's like one of the funniest shows on tv right now really it's about three vampires and a familiar it's a comedy it's filmed like the office document document okay. star or, i like, mean documentary style yeah. didn't yeah. know what the fuck i was saying I got you, but, no, but uh it's a collective community inclusive dude <laughs> it seriously is the funniest on uh might be fx but you can get them all on hulu well, i know you're a big show guy they're talking do you like you got everything like hbo max hulu all that shit like, i don't have a. Uh, yeah i get it if okay I it. yeah like mayor of easton is a show i've been hearing never heard about um there's a huge actress in it that i can't remember right now but it's, it's like a murder mystery it's been getting hu- i'm I've back on it all uh, over. I'm Twitter. back on Hand- Handmaid's Tale. It just started. I haven't gotten into that. I mean, it's yeah. a you don't want to. Yeah, it's dark. Well, I'm not you horror. Got, like I'm not. That's not my bag. Dog. It's not Do horror. You guys have but some it kind of be. schedule where, like, all right, this night I'm gonna watch episode. Well, we're lucky because we get bulk releases mainly. You know, Snowfall so was a weekly it. release. So that one, I would, Antoinette don't watch it because it's too much anxiety for yeah. her. But she'll still watch Handmaid, which is <laughs> that's literally why I the can't, most stressful. I can't watch. Like TV series anymore, uh, dude. It's so that's poppycock. That's like some of the. We're in the world of the greatest TV that we could ever watch. I like no, but like I'm like also, True Detective, first season yeah, was sick. Oh, yeah, dude, yeah, I mean, take yeah. the second. The third was so kind of washed, but yeah. the first season is like one of the greatest series I of all Dexter. time. I thought yeah. Dexter was great till the end. I didn't like it. Oh, I thought really? uh, I At got all? into well. I mean, I watched like the first two seasons of it, but then like I just it never like kept me back into it. And then the ending, I saw the ending. I never watched Game of Thrones. Lucky, y- you know, uh, was worth the investment. Lucky. It wasn't dog because I was the Game Dude, of Thrones TV, was one. I f- sorry, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Dude, TV <laughs> oh, needs show, to t- uh, Netflix. <laughs> Whatever it is, they need to stop with all this um, anxiety-driven TV, dude. It's not oh, yeah, good like, for people. Like thirteen dude. reasons like, why. This is why Bro, I would like to shit smoke weed, like- dude, because it fucking gets rid of my anxiety. <laughs> but that like anxiety why watch porn something shit that just like, yeah. fucking makes your brain go. Not trust me. I like to watch. Like I watched the leftovers on HBO. Did you ever see that show? It was I, like about like the rapture kind. Yeah. Of, like people just. I like, saw disappear. one series or one part of it where they literally like stoned an old lady. It's and crazy. I cried and I just I like it made me tear up and I just had to that turn it off. Who show, wants to watch that? But dude? that's the show that like I felt the most like viscerally while watching like yeah. a mix of emotions. But there are people out there who like like wake up and like want to feel anxiety like that's like that's like a fucking addiction yeah. i don't like, want but, to but no, it's like a scratch like 13 an reasons because why like that i watched like, it did you like oh, yeah th- both seasons uh i think two seasons i didn't watch a third season okay. i think there was a third season i don't know but like yeah see like that to me is like uh i would never it have is, any interest in it's watching like a, it's like almost that. like that uh that murder porn you know like exactly. i watch the documentaries of all that stuff like well, i love all that dude and it's funny like my uh my lady shout out mrs neighbor like when i first met her that was like what she loved to watch all the time and she literally like was like i'm gonna stop watching this because it's like affecting how i view the world and yeah shit. it's negative like, yeah, yeah again dude. not to take like a crazy you turn breaking with it, bad but- for a full day and bang out like eight episodes you're gonna come out feeling weird 
Like a so I'm going to sell meth yeah. and we're going to make it I happen. I need a camper. Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I need a yeah, camper. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so second epi- or the second category that I usually give each person is three books to take with you, but I have different topics. I'd like to know three of uh, your favorite uh, skate videos that, that, that you would like Ooh, and that you cool. would take. I'm hyped to hear this, actually. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. curious. Because someone who's, like, going. real into skating. Bro, and that's what I've always said. Like, my one of my main motivations is getting skater on. I'll buy him some time here because I know my man. I know he needs to uh, spot up for a shot right now. I got to buy some yeah. time with the dribble. Um, that's all right. What about, let me ask you your three. What about, uh, so I don't know too much about, like, what you're into, but I could see you have a Jordan hoodie on. Yep. My, because uh, I mean, if you want to read, you could pick three books. No, definitely don't want to do that. Okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I yeah. usually <laughs> always will try to think of a a default question. Okay, and uh, I'm not going to do video games with you. What about what about shoes? Are you a shoe guy? Uh, not really. To yeah. be honest, I mean, I, I, I mean, I got my few pairs of J's here and there. What about I could probably uh, do video games before? I what about video shoes. games? Any system like across whatever platforms. you want. Okay, so Dreamcast. You're probably a Dreamcast guy. No, huh? PS2. I'm just I <laughs> Bro, me and Fancy Red <laughs> just went on a 10 minute conversation about Dreamcast while we were tattooing Andy and about like the part of the controllers oh. and how that made that. Uh, it's funny the only thing I ever played that. was Crazy Taxi. We were talking about uh, what else were we talking about on fucking Gamecast? God damn it, I can't remember. Sorry. Um, but video games, for PS2, MVP Baseball 2005 with Manny okay. Ramirez on the cover. Like one of my, okay. like, I'm a sports game guy to a T. I would probably, that being said, two, I got to take GTA Five, the last GTA mm. is just like a great. I was never game. a GTA guy, really. But you, said, I never played video games, really. Really, didn't I hear you say you played Red Dead Redemption, went hunting for eleven hours or something? And yeah, then but you I put feel it like down? that's a perfect example. It's like I'm not into it for the video games. I just like want to certain things. Like I remember, I loved 007 for N64, mm-hmm. Goldeneye, obviously, right? So sick. Mario Kart, right? 1080 yeah. snowboarding and Blitz. That was, was my and say, Tony Hawk. So yeah, that dude, was I think it. Those were my only four games. Like, I just N64 copped the Tony Hawk uh, remake, like when it came out, like and it was like I was trash. Like, disappointed. It was dude. trash. Oh, really? It was trash. Right? I immediately sent it. Back. You want it to be on N64? <laughs> like I didn't know about the two week rule until like after I bought that and I found out that you can send shit back in two weeks. Caca. I would have sent that shit back in two seconds. I was seconds. sick about Sorry, it. Sorry, off work that day Brutal, to play dude. Like, yeah. <laughs> I did I called off work that, that was day like three play. months ago yeah. <laughs> yeah I did I did I called off work to play and you. I was like is this it yeah, yeah I guess I don't know it's funny video games is something I always uh has become something in my life that's like I always say about the show it's better than playing video games because I was not someone who was a super gamer and then I got to a point where I was just like biding my time with it I feel like but uh Tiger Woods OG Tiger Woods or Blitz would be my last mm. last pick okay for sure that's good. All right, Skater. You ready? Honorable so, mention, NHL hits. Oh, man. Wait, what was the baseball one? MLB hits? MLB. Or Slugfest? Slugfest, yeah. yeah. With the big heads and shit. All the homie games from the sleepovers. Yeah, yeah, you just know? the sleepover games. Yeah, That's exactly. exactly it. Mario yeah, Party. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so skateboard. Favorite, uh, three best skate videos? Yes. Your favorite skate videos? Uh, the first one, I guess, would be... Uh, Welcome to Hell. Mm. It came out in like 1998. I started skating in like 2000, maybe 2001. Actually, scratch that. Welcome to Hell came out in like 1996. Um, anyway, that video, Toy Machine video, uh, definitely set the bar for the late 90s of skateboarding. Old Templeton, that that wildcat. Well, I mean... They they made a video after that called Jump Off a Building, which is actually r- really fucking sick. That that's it might even be better, but I don't know. But that was in ninety eight. Then nineteen ninety nine was the first year of X Games. Mm. So enter in skateboarding blowing up for mm. the first time since like the eighties. Um thanks to Tony Hawk and X Games and shit like that. Um, the second favorite skate video, I'm going to try and go in chronological order here. My second favorite skate video, I guess, uh, I really like the flip. Sorry video. Yeah. Um, fucking dudes getting so gnarly third. (laughs) Uh, let's see third. Let's try and keep it local ish. You're going to get a fucking shot. Um, Third favorite skate video. I know I'm going to listen to this and just be like, what the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> that's what everyone does. Curveball, Dude, that's what everyone um, does whenever like they it. listen. 
third video. Uh, oh, dude. Yeah. Uh, it's fucking homie video from like out in Oakland SF called the house video. Mm. It's just uh, like fucking dirt style, like raw dog video. It's, it's just like, <laughs> pause. <laughs> All right. It's sick, dude. No, it's just like, it, it's nothing uh, over produced, you know, yeah. it's like a dude with the fucking camera Love it. and his homies and they just filmed whatever, I wherever they were at. They didn't really have like, a fucking spot to go to every day. They just decided to stay every day and wherever they went, they fucking made a video out of it. I think that, uh, you know, I always listen to what people say on here for their desert Island. And I think one of my choices to watch, I'm not even kidding. Might be King of the road. Uh, it's a great show. It really is so good. It makes me so sad that it's not on anymore, but it's just like, that was just so good. That's like when vice was cool. Now vice. Yeah. Vice is all dumb as fuck. <clears throat> they don't do it anymore now it's because of uh supposedly what i heard is like you know too much drugs too much getting crazy there's a lot of smoking much skater weed life shit. yeah drinking beer. <laughs> probably a lot more than yeah. that you know what i mean but the, just chaos you know what i mean yeah. organized chaos well, they did it like way like thrasher did it as its own thing yeah for so many years and then vice bought into it. Yeah, and it, it like beefed it. it up. You're like, you yeah. know, get fucking crazy. Right, and that's one of those yeah, things yeah. that probably like uh, people are like, oh, they shouldn't be doing that. It's not healthy for them. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And this, this is young like, kid are drinking. Yeah. They're drinking. Two for me, in a bus. Oh my God. That just fucking makes me appreciate skateboarding so much more is because someone got sick of it. Yeah. <laughs> someone <laughs> was like, this shit is not cool or not good for, for young people and not good at all for society. And it's like, well... That's how it fucking started. So <laughs> when I see that shit, that's I, the way it I is. I kind of get like psyched about it. You know? I agree with that. Yeah. All right. Uh, third category is three CDs to listen to. So, I mean, um, I, I know it's a heavy question, but mixtapes count. No, we can do album. You can say no. I'll give you greatest hits if you want mm, that. Okay. All right, but not mixtapes. I mean, I mean, mixtape. Do you mean like a, an official mixtape by someone, or yeah, do you, like okay. J Cole, like the warm up, or okay, like yeah. Or jukebox, I didn't know if it was like, like hey, it was one of no, 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 not like DJ Bob's like <laughs> yeah. Yeah, favorite little Wayne songs, yeah. but like summer the, hits, but like too. the drought three, like shit, okay, like that. yeah, okay. um, I'll allow it. You a big J Cole fan? Huge, my favorite by far, hands down. Really? Yeah, without a favorite, doubt. Favorite. Hands wow. down, without a doubt, like. No, it's interesting no to listen to the conversation with him. A lot of people say he's boring, but I don't find him boring. I just find him uh, comfortable. I want to say it's comfortable because I don't feel that J. Cole needs to get on there like fucking Meek Mill and Dream Chasers and just go off. J. Cole is just preaching the word in his own way, and I love that. Yeah, I think if, like, I'm listening to rap for bars, like, you know what I mean? And he's got, I think, undoubtedly, him and. Kendrick have the best bars. Like, again, I, I understand, and I'm not saying this is you. Like, if you're a fan of hip hop right now, I could understand. I totally understand why you don't like J. Cole. It's like two different things for sure. Um, but I don't mind him. Yeah. No, I'll say, uh, gotta go Eminem show. That's like the first CD oh. I remember buying. Like, I like that. That's a good PA answer. sticker. Yeah. Um, gotta go Eminem show. I'm gonna go if you, you gave me greatest hits ability. Yeah. Bruce Springsteen greatest hits. Probably, really? Who I've seen the, the boss. most. Bro, I've seen him 22 yeah. times in concert boss. or something. Really? Shit. 22. Yeah, like, bro, my. Pops is like a sycophant, like super fan. Oh, wow. like, yeah, so like it's like our thing. You like, said your dad listens to podcasts? Oh, yeah, calls in. Like, he has a, uh, Bruce Springsteen has a podcast with Obama. Oh, dude, if you don't think Big L is all over those it's episodes. Good. Oh, that's I what just he said. started that's listening what he said. to it. I haven't checked it out yet, but he said it was good. I'm not going to claim that I, I, I don't even, I know Bruce Springsteen song if it comes on the radio right, and yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, man, yeah, you, you know what I mean? Right I don't know nothing else oh. about him, yeah, but oh, I bro. really enjoyed, you know, their back and forth. Yeah, just a huge part of growing up is Springsteen so I got um, M, and then I got to do I got to do kids I got to do okay. yeah I got to yeah. do kids that's a, that's a moment yeah just like and moment just like, in time uh, just, just got to give the boy some love yeah so, yeah for sure I love that what's your favorite track on there I know it's hard. No, the pass. All right. That's Nike's fair. on my feet, probably. Uh, yeah, yeah it's just like, I was actually just at the Alderdice Field yesterday. I like, but don't yeah. mind if I do. Okay, yeah. Just popped on the other day, and yeah. I was like, God, just reminds me of that moment. Oh, bro. It's, uh, I remember exactly where I was whenever I was listening to yeah. it. Damn. That's deep. Um, okay. Three favorite CDs. 
Uh, one would be Raekwon's first album, mm. uh, only built for Cuban links. I loved when they made rap albums back in the day when it was almost like listening to a movie. Yeah. In the sense that there were like skits. There were and skits like, and shit too, but like if it you listen real closely, like each song had their own skit too. And there was like a lot of foreshadowing and shit oh, yeah. like that. Wu Tang fucking specialized in yeah, that shit. Absolutely. Um and Raekwon's first album is just the best example of that. Um Second, uh, second favorite album CD would be uh, Project Pat, Mr. Don't wow. Play. Project I think, Pat. Uh, <clears throat> I think Project Pat's my favorite rapper ever. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah. Everybody says I, that. When I he was says like, that. damn. You mean, no, no, it just literally like you I would have never had that life. exact same dude, conversation this during the tattoo mother video. Fucking guy is so funny, dude. So funny. <laughs> I would have never it, in my it, life. Juicy J is really funny, but Project Pat. Oh well, man, that's, I think, part so of it, too, funny. is like whenever people fuck with 3-6, like 99% of the time, it's always Juicy, Juicy J. J. But yeah. it's just like, yeah, but Project there are Pat's, Project Pat. No, I, he's I fuck on his with own it. fucking game, dude. All right. Like, uh, so number three, I was trying to pick a non-rap album. Uh, uh, I'll just go with Iron Maiden because that's like one of my favorite bands ever. Uh, the album Killers. Okay. It was their second album. All right. It's a heater. <laughs> it's a, a slapper heater. alert. Yeah. <laughs> Every single song. Bangers like, All only. these albums that I'm naming, like, I can seriously listen to every single song. Front to back. And yeah. almost like, I will not listen to any of the songs, not in order. That's you know? fine. I understand I that. the whole album. I, uh, I'm going to be putting a, uh, I'm going to be putting a, uh, the DJ. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just so I can give it on there real quick. You know, slappers yeah, only. There you go. Yeah. Came with all these, like, Oh, dude, don't. Dude, yeah, I'm already going to buy this that. thing, but like, oh, you get, could you make beats on this? Like, oh, I'll make know, all for, kinds yeah, of shit dude, on here. Yeah. Don't make me. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm no, a poet. You don't know. It. for Billy Hoyle's throne. Uh, I love no, it. But yeah. this device is like, like game what? changer. Get what you want you on there for sure. Out. You can call people up in there. Let's get it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So the third to last question, the death row meal. Oh, so you guys get to pick whatever you want to eat from wherever you want as much as you want. I need an appetizer, I need a main course, and I need a dessert. All from the same spot. No. Ooh, appetizer, main course, dessert. Holy fuck. I'll go first. Mine's really fast. All right, fuck. <laughs> I'm like rattled again. So it's your last meal, right? Last meal before you like, die. I, it, so, in other words, after this, you die. Gonna hang you or put a bullet in the back of your fucking head. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, a 30 rack of beer and like a carton of cigarettes is what I would want. <laughs> Seriously. A 30 rack of beer and a carton of cigarettes. He didn't even have a when dessert. When they're about to die. <laughs> <laughs> What's dessert? A little snus pouch? Yeah, yeah. Plus yeah. Uh, <laughs> dessert would be. A bowl pack. I guess a turner or something. Oh, no, you can't do that. No, it's illegal. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's states. illegal. No, some like, states. no, a joint would just be whatever, like a shot of fucking. Yeah, go ahead. I'll, I'll allow it. Or something. You I'll know, allow it. Liquid diet. Like, <laughs> yeah. dude, it. literally, though, if it's your last meal. I'm eating. I'm not eating. All I'm right. fucking, I'm going to drink the rest of this rack, the whole rack, and smoke a bunch of cigs. Because after all, <laughs> you're six feet under after that. Yeah, fuck, <laughs> it. So, fuck it. All right, I got, um, I got to go... I'm going to do for my appetizer, I'll do wings from the spot Buffalo Blues that was by us where we grew up, no longer around, but mm. most fire wings that were in the game. So that would be my appetizer. I think my dinner would have to be, or meal, would be uh, ILO's pizza for sure. Mm. Um, and then dessert would be probably one of those Nancy B cookies, dog. Those chocolate chip Nancy mm. Bs are just dynamite. Or maybe a Leona's. Shout out. Like, for quick plug. But, Leona's. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I had one the other day. Changed uh, my bro. life. It was or, a actually, one. I'm going to change my dessert. Can I change my dessert? Change uh, it. Change it. Bring Boom. another it's one. Not, uh, juice bar, ice cream. Ice cream from the juice bar on Nantucket Island in Massachusetts. Best ice cream in the entire world. So, a little spot I used wow. to hit up back in the day. You ever have Glenn's Custard? Oh, uh, Yeah. Dude, I'd rival it against Glenn's pages, whatever you want to put really? up there. Yeah, I don't think pages. 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 Come on. No? What? What? 
Been to pages like one time, uh, you know. See, you, you, now you got neighbor Nick syndrome where you only tried it once or not a long time or a long time ago. And, and I, No, like, I tried it like, I tried it probably two times within the last year, year and a half. And I just do not find maybe anything. Maybe they got some new workers there or something. <laughs> some suspect workers. Listen to me. If like- you guys came to Pittsburgh and you just went to that place and you could wipe away nostalgia... You can't do that though. That's a, especially in the ice cream game. That's a huge part of it. I like mean, nostalgia. I guess Clavin's like down in strip district, probably average ice cream, but tastes better. Cause it comes out of that little fucking 1930s Touché. shit. I'll allow it. Yeah. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. <laughs> See, that's why I like you. You're open to change. They left me on the red. They left me on Clavin. red. Clavin's Next time I'm in there, red. I'll say something. I'll they left red. me on red and I was, I was hurt. <laughs> really? Well, we were talking about spitting chiglets. RA left me on red. So if we, oh, did ma- he? yeah, if we can manifest both those interviews, that would be fucking phenomenal. Yeah. A couple people have left me on red and it hurts me because it's just like, just tell me fucking no i like to think that they're just busy and they forgot Uh, (laughs) that's that's another thing getting into your 30s dude you're 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 gonna learn about that shit yeah i guess realize your old man rivering some people are gonna fuck (laughs) (laughs) your old man rivering (laughs) us you're only 30 but that's what i'm saying you're talking to us like you always get mad at me when i say you're so much older than us you see, keep saying when you get your 30s, years. we're all in it's, our 30s, dude, dog. Okay, put it this way. Put it this way. Imagine that you're 20. Yeah, your whole life is different. Facts. But hold on. I was wearing then Team think, Jordans and going to about, Wim. Whoa, then think about 23. Yeah. <laughs> no, imagine. No, I'm Shout saying, out Wim. Fuck. I'm just saying. Imagine if you're 20. Then imagine that you're 23. Okay, now <laughs> imagine that you're 30. Imagine 33. It's a way big way bigger difference dude. i bet that's fair Facts. that's fair Facts. um yeah. okay second to last question the most important and the most judged question by me personally oh, fuck. if you're getting ready to go on a road trip okay Uh-oh. you get to walk in and pick one snack no cigarettes no drinks no nothing one snack what is it pepperoni combos <laughs> there you go game over that's a uh that's a car ride yeah that's a for car sure ride combos thing. are the shit uh, Regular outside, not the pretzel outside. Mm. Fuck the pretzel outside. Damn, dude. Combos remind me of nostalgia. You know, they're nostalgic I, to me. Dude, I hate to say it, but I would go with combos too. Really? Yeah. All right. That's fair. Uh, what flavor? Get your own swag. Uh, I like the pizza ones. I pizza like combos. The, uh, the cheese ones. They're really good. Wow. Um, combos, though. Dude, combos are the shit. They're a little expensive. But they're worth it. Combos. Like for the waxing, boys. That's, what, that's waxing. what you don't like is inflation really getting to the combo market. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gas is up 58%, boy. but Rob just can't inflation stand the combo is about inflation. Too Fucking combo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, last, last, con- or last question that I ask everyone. If you could have a conversation with anyone alive or dead, who would it be and why? That's, that's a really good one. Anyone? Yeah. Well, it's got to be someone who's dead because if they're alive you could still possibly have this conversation you could this is the way my brains think zen skater action um um anyone dead or alive this is a hard one this is i'm also going to put the bon jovi dead or (laughs) (laughs) bon jovi um who do I, I got to say, and I don't know if this is just like at the top of my mind right now. I hear people come on this all the time and say, I'd probably change my answers if I came tomorrow, but uh, probably Portnoy, man. Like, I, really? Yeah. I just, I fucking, I followed their shit for so fucking long and yeah. he's an interesting dude. Exactly. And, and I would love to like, uh, like if you could give him true serum, it could be a hundred percent. Yeah. Like, and pick his you, brain. Do you fuck with where Barstool ended up? Like, did you always want to kind of be like, so does he like, not own it at all anymore? He no, sold it. No, he does. I think like, again, I think it's all equity and shit, but he. Yeah. And I think anyone who's in, not anyone, but most people our age, our generation, if you're into some type of this shit, like you've kind of, you fall, know. you've kept in tabs on Barstool, like yeah. whatever. But like, yeah, I'm going to listen to this tomorrow and hate that answer. But like, I just didn't want to have it. It's any not more a bad dinner. answer though. He's like one of the, you know, he does great shit. And I, I, I love the transparency. I love that he doesn't give a fuck what people say. See, I'm also interested is like, is he as transparent as he lets on? Like, I, I would like to not not in terms of like what he says, but like how taxing is the lifestyle? Like, like how taxing was going up against Goodell and all that? Like, you had to get to a point where you were you were faking the funk a little bit with like wanting to talk about the flake gate and shit like that. So just to get like the true like how the sausage is made story it wouldn't like be like the most inspiring. Like, oh, like whatever. I like that. Yeah, That's I'd a good like point. To hear, like the, the the bad shit too. That's a good point for yeah. sure. Skater. 
The um, brewer of Coors Light. <laughs> <laughs> kind of looks like a brewery over here. <laughs> Coors. Uh, it in, son. Uh, Golden Colorado. I'm like a big like history kind of guy. So I think I would like to... Um, I don't know. There's, I'm really big into like reading about the mafia and shit. And like, there's tons of old mobsters from back in the day, like in the thirties, forties, fifties that I would really love to just have a conversation, sit down with them. I need one of them. Conversation. You get to pick one. One would be, I guess, um, Dino Spumoni. Just no, <laughs> there's a, the, so the local boss in Pittsburgh, I guess I would just choose the Pittsburgh like mob boss, dude. Who is that? Local guy. Uh, Big John LaRocca. Are you like uh, putting yourself in danger right here? Like, I don't know. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I might need to edit that out. No, I mean, that's a good answer though. Yeah. This this dude um, was like the the boss of the Pittsburgh mafia family from like, probably the early fifties until like, uh, the seventies or eighties. Um, I don't know. There, there, there's so many books on the mafia that are about Cleveland, Philadelphia, Boston, Florida, everywhere else besides Chicago and New York. But there's never been a book about, uh, Pittsburgh hmm. organized crime and it existed <laughs> just like it did in every other city that I just mentioned. That's interesting. Um, It'd be really cool to like go back in time and just sit there and fucking if they pick would their allow brain. Me, yeah, pick their brain the shit with this guy. Yeah, and just see what he's all about. That's Maybe a good answer. Get whacked, son. Yeah. That's a good answer. Yeah. Um wow. I think that we had a great episode, right? Bro. Yeah. I hope so. Sorry. I had I think so it was much great. fun. How do we do? This is our first Thanks time. Skater's second through, time man. getting interviewed. My first time. This is your first time ever being interviewed? For sure. Yeah. I thought about asking you guys to come on separately and drop them both mm-hmm. in the same week, one Tuesday, one Thursday. But Ooh. I like that uh, you know, I like that, you know, we have the idea. I feel like that this is a revealing podcast about what people can expect once they go over and uh, hop on the anybody well, show. Well, dude, I mean, anybody yeah. could do this. We got to do some talking offline about some things we can link. I'll call you right back. Or do you have like a, mon- you got to figure that out too. Like the, well, you, I, yeah, I got yeah. a moniker. I'm uh, thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And then, but like linking them, the anybody's like, I know we like golf. Not everybody likes golf, but maybe like a golf outing, something where we can oh, just yeah. everybody we link got up. Wheels it's going to be a nice summer. So. We got some wheels turning. Stay tuned in that. Um, give us that. I mean, now plug all your shit where everyone can find everything. The, anybody can do this show. Skater, how good is your memory? Can you do it? We haven't done an episode in a couple of weeks, so. <laughs> Instagram uh, handle. Yeah. Oh. The anybody can do this show. Bang. Email. Uh, the ACDT show at gmail.com. Go off, King. Um, Twitter. <laughs> we never talk about Twitter. Please, Neither do I. Not, at dude. ACDT but underscore But I think he pod. wants to know, he wants to know like personal shit too. Like, I, I can put on one. your personal yeah, shit too. I don't have one, so. Well, like. Oh yeah, you don't have. He, he doesn't really have an Instagram. If I we guess. didn't have the show, I, I know. Have I, already, I already was looking you up. Yeah, He's yeah. Got a no, low sorry, key. son. I respect that though. I got some homies that have a low key Instagram, and it's tight. Got to be low um, key. I I have an uh, Instagram where I post all my art and shit. It's Cheddar Bob with four B's at the end. <laughs> um, and then uh, yeah, fuck Yins. Uh, that handle is FCK underscore Y N Z on Instagram and uh gotta gotta give fancy at fancy bread and add Andy Feathers a plug too. Yeah fancy bread and Andy Feathers the uh the creators the yeah the sort of starters the, and the, creators the forefathers the exactly were, they crawled so we could run down with. they crawled so we could <laughs> run <laughs> that's hilarious oh uh, Chad thank you dog this was awesome yeah, I dude. appreciate it very very much thanks so much uh, uh, the anybody can do this show is live now right live now join we us for season four season four is out right now with the great Matt Spar um, so I appreciate everyone listening as usual if you have not yet please rate review and subscribe to the podcast very important for the little guys uh, kicking the rocks down in Pittsburgh um, but if you could you know hop over to the anybody can do this show check them out you'll enjoy it 
Uh, it's fun, lighthearted, you know, uh, it, you know, they, there's gems in there. You know what I mean? There's gems, there's gems in all this, uh, silly goose action. Few and far between, but there, few and far between <laughs> but whenever they're there, you know, it's, it's, uh, You'll it, find some. it Appreciate counts. That. Thank it you, counts. Cousin. Yeah. Uh, everyone else though, uh, thank you for listening to the whole thing as usual. I appreciate it. You know, we always uh, are thankful for the people that listen to all this. Uh, again, I can't stress it enough. Rate, review, subscribe to the podcast and go over, hop on over to Steel City Dog or Steel City and uh, grab yourself some Turner Steel City merch that is out as we speak. But thanks for listening and I'll call you right back. <laughs> <laughs>